and there he is, the great Jim Steins. 250th game today, just a marvellous performance, Mick, to, uh, to reach the 250, let alone the 244 consecutive games. Yeah, sensational effort by Big Jimmy. No doubt he'll be pumped up, and the Melbourne teammates will be certainly wanting to make this one a memorable one for him. So it's important, though, they've actually just had that hiccup last week, and all of a sudden they're... Uh, their position in the top four has got a bit tenuous, so this game just was so important for them to uh, consolidate near that top group. Yeah, and it's as important as what it is for Collingwood. They're four and three at this moment. They need that little bit of a buffer. They need to win today, just Collingwood. But no doubt the Melbourne people will be trying to do it for Big Jimmy. 250th game. Interesting their style. Uh, 13th in uh, scores four and uh, second scores against. So it's a, a defensive attitude has been the way Melbourne have been going about it. Yeah, for sure. They'll be trying to be one-on-ones all over the ground, I think. Both Collingwood with coach Tony Shaw and also Neil Danner coach of Melbourne. They'll be trying to instigate that action, make it one-on-ones all over the ground and make it a battle from that point. Because there's certainly been big margins in the last four games they've played. Melbourne have won three and I think 38 points is the smallest margin. Collingwood have had a couple of almost 100 point wins so uh, sometimes the games have been a blowout but I think it's a different Melbourne side the way they're approaching their football in 98. Yeah for sure Lee and the thing about it they're using a four-man for four forward line is Melbourne. They're trying to open it up and also they're trying to crowd the defensive part of the ground. They'll have to probably do that and you look at the Melbourne Melbourne team there, as we spoke about, Jimmy Steins is a great effort. But the interesting duel, I think, today, which will decide the outcome, uh, Shanahan against Rocker in the key full forward, full back posts. I think that'll be very important. But also Farmer up the other end for Melbourne. He's a very good player. Maybe his direct opponent today could be Graham Wright, someone of that nature, and they'll try to tie it up. And Paul Hopgood looks like getting the job on Paul Williams in the midfield. Probably David Schwartz. He's going to be the key marking forward for Melbourne, uh, given that Gary Lyon is out. Sean Smith probably will play down there as well. And Anthony Rocker we see on screen. Certainly Collingwood will welcome him back. Still only a young player, still inexperienced, but uh, when he has a good game at centre-half forward, it really elevates Collingwood to another level. Yeah, well, last week they certainly broke down across centre-half forward and they'll certainly welcome his return, well, Anthony Rocker. But I think the uh, effort of Damien Monkhurst will be very important, the way he attacks the footy, the way, way he attacks that first bounce. Usually, the way he attacks it gives the Collingwood it players impetus the way they go about their game. Nathan Buckley, of course, in the midfield. Who'll get the job today? Maybe Woe Woden, because he's been very good over the last four or five weeks as Buckley. He sort of set him up on the way through. But I also think Graham Wright and Gavin Krasiska, two veterans, hope they don't mind me calling them that lead, but they've been two terrific players for the Collingwood team and they'll probably get a defensive sort of starting point, a defensive role today. Well, certainly it's... Uh... It's a big game building up. Anthony Ingerson there, Paul Hopgood, who may well, as you mentioned, be the tagging opponent to uh, Paul Williams. He's actually a Nathan Buckley there. He's just a high possession getting wherever he plays uh, for the Collingwood team. Uh, David Schwartz. Uh, just great to see him back on the field, Mick. Yeah, it's a great effort to come back from three re knee reconstructions. The play go about the way he's playing today, and here's Scotty Burns, a very important player with Monkhurst, to add that leadership and stability across half-back. Whether he starts or whether he starts on the interchange bench, time will tell. And it's a very look at Jamie Shannon. That duel is going to be critical. Uh, if Rocker kicks his four and five, it's amazing how Collingwood can get another 10 or 15. But if he doesn't score much at all, they seem to be almost reduced to single figures. They can certainly break down. Yeah, it'd be good. Well, it's a big occasion. Big crowd in. We'll go to a short break and we'll be back with the opening bounce. Welcome back to Sunday Football, alive and well here at the MCG. Fantastic atmosphere, great crowd, in excess of 60,000, I would imagine, at the moment. We'll check the men in white in charge of proceedings. Darren Goldspeak, but there you can see Matthew Norton, who's wearing 16. Stuart Wen is wearing 22. And Darren Goldspeak is wearing number 32. The men in white in charge of today's big game. Speaking of the men in white, well... He's down on the boundary today. He's become a boundary rider as our fourth umpire. Is that good or bad, John? Welcome. I think it's good, Sandy. I enjoy it down here so as I can enjoy the atmosphere. But uh, just in relation to the conditions, the ground, as usual, is in fantastic nick. And the weather is fine, overcast and hardly a breath of wind. So you certainly wouldn't expect there to be any influence from the weather. Uh, I'm going for the Demons, even though the pies have been bolstered by Francis and Burns. So uh, let's have a look. Thanks, John. Saverio Rocker and Shanahan, some great duels around this ground. So here we go as round eight continues. Shane Watson will be looking uh, for some early touch in front of goal. Buckley and Viney in the middle. That should be a beauty too. Jimmy Steins is 250th. He wins it down. First kick by Leoncelli. Hurriedly up towards half forward. And a strong mark. An excellent chance now for the Wizard. He's playing game number 50. Palmer up towards full forward. They need a mark, but they don't get it. 
It's the new look Collingwood with the, their old style socks defending grimly. That was Godden going to the outer side. Lee, what do you think of those new socks? Well, they look like it's a 50 years. We've been taking back 50 years, I reckon, with their away Guernsey and those. Uh, <laughs> they look like they've got ankle bandage on, the old style ankle <laughs> bandage. And certainly early in the game, both sides played spare man backward to the centre square. So. I think getting players behind the ball is certainly an attitude Melbourne have uh, gone with most of the year and again today. Farmer gets it to Owode and he kicks down towards the forward line. Mal Michael tops it off. Collingwood defence standing firm in these opening minutes. Short pass is OK to Patterson. It came from Godden. He was perhaps a little fortunate. Graham writes away. Collingwood into attack towards Rocker. Cop one round the chops. Picks himself up. They'll go forward again through Williams if he can catch Phoebe. Phoebe pushes towards the line. And any matchups, uh, Mick, that uh, apparent yep. early? And Phoebe's got the job on Paul Williams. It looks like Paul Hopgood now has got the job on Nathan Buckley. The Francis boys, uh, both on the interchange bench to start with, along with Pugsley. Melbourne away again. Phoebe is clear through the middle, up towards half forward. Poor kick, however. You're going to have to pick your targets because there's going to be spare men back in almost each defensive half on the way forward. Long high kicks, they're going to be outnumbered. Richardson's kick is OK. He finds Rocker. McDonald's are plenty in this game today. The three brothers all playing. This is Monkhorst. The plumber's in the middle of the MCG. Anthony Rocker dropped his head. Schäuble to Watson. Dangerous in front of goal. Gergich defends again for Melbourne. Scotty Russell couldn't take it cleanly. Has managed to get it out to Graham Wright. He goes inboard to Alex McDonald. Second kick for McDonald as he picks out a player in the pocket. And he picks out Patterson. I think mean, Patterson's on Viney, I would think. And he's just drifted uh, forward of Viney uh, when Collingwood were able to get the numbers across uh, midfield. But it's going to be a big effort, I think. The way Melbourne have set this game up, their forwards are going to have to work really hard because there's going to be a scare, spare Collingwood defender, I think, most times when Melbourne go forward. Young man from Norwood, originally in South Australia. He's kicked just one goal so far this season. Hasn't missed a game. Measures his run-up. And now sets himself for the first score of the day. Forty-five degree angle. Pulling it slightly to the left. It's so important, Sandy, when you've got a job as Stephen Patterson's got on Viney, when you do push forward into that part of the ground to put some pressure back onto Viney, you have to kick goals like that. Who do you fancy, Mick, today? I think Collingwood will win just because of the two rockers. I think they've got more scoring power, no line, no needs, and there's the responsibility is on White and also Schwartz. Stephen Phoebe bringing it back in. Gergich kicks to the outer side. It's a good kick too by Gergich. Big pack of players and Ingerson comes over the top. Does well. Comes inside to Guy Ragone. He's got Hopgood running for him. The D's are away. Seacamp caught by Watson and he's got to be beaten. But he's not. It's an interesting call. I think two weeks ago that probably would have been holding the ball, Mick. But I think a couple of... Uh Controversial decisions uh, in the, la the round before last. Now they're giving uh, the umpires, they're giving the player with the ball a lot more opportunity. And really only took possession and got tackled. He certainly had little prior opportunity, I would have thought. That's exactly right, Lee. Oh, you can't get rid of that, you, that John. fourth umpire, <laughs> even though he's down on the ground. Melbourne again through Farmer defend. Gets the hand pass away nicely towards Seacamp. Kicks up towards the half forward line. Crows at the back for Collingwood. A worm burner in towards half forward. McDonald leaves it for Watson. Watson chips towards uh, the forward line. That's better. Sam will have a shot directly in front. That was terrific deft touch by Alex McDonald. Allowed yep. the ball to go into the path of Watson. But more importantly, Watson's weighted kick. He didn't kick through the ball very hard. He just weighted the ball in a perfect manner so Severio Rocker could run into it and take an easy chest mark. A drought last week for Sav but has had good form in recent times against Melbourne. In fact, has booted 16. Scotty Burns has just come onto the ground, replacing Luke Godden. In the last two matches against the Dees, 16, and he started OK today. The Pies are away. 
Saverio Rocca gets his 23rd goal. It's a simple game, Mick, when you're playing full forward like that. The space was there, and all he had to do was run the space and get it put out in front, and uh, nothing any fullback can do about it. But it's the turnover that's really costly. I do think at this stage, very early in the game, Collingwood have got their numbers at half-back, and if the Melbourne forwards don't mark the ball, this play will happen quite often. First blood to the pies through Savrocka. Monkhorst and Steins to go at it again. Uh, the monkey got a hand on that. Crow will kick them down towards uh, Anthony Rocker. Offhand, Scotty Russell. Two in 30 seconds, yes! Yeah, terrific play by Scotty Russell. Got front and square to that contest there when the two Melbourne players actually got up and probably spoiled each other. But that's what you've got to do, get to the percentage spot when there is a crumbing situation about to evolve. Scotty Russell did this on this occasion. Buckley here, brute strength got through that tackle. You must hold the tackle, the Melbourne players. But here it was. The ball went to ground. Scotty Russell front and square to the contest. That's great conversion when a Melbourne player was coming directly at the kicker. I think Woden too was third man up. And really, if you're going to be third man up, you've got to mark it or you've got to punch it a long way clear because if it drops short, there's going to be a spare opposition player at ground level. Pies by 13 points early in this first term. Steins wanted Hopgood. Didn't quite get him. Leoncelli kicks long and direct down to half forward. Collingwood had the numbers, but it spills free. Viney works hard. He works very hard, but he loses the football. Williams defends, kicks back towards the centre. That's OK. Mark taken by tape. Collingwood continue to surge forward. Now, Rocker's away from Shanahan again. Severio Rocker, 55 out. 45 degree angle. Again, Mick, the other ball dropping short, and at the moment, Shanahan is allowing Rocker to get the front position, and uh, he's going to lead into a lot of balls if that continues, particularly with the space that Collingwood seem to be uh, developing in midfield coming forward. Melbourne are always very good at getting the balls at the centre breaks, Lee, and that's what's happening at the moment. They're getting the ball forward because of the weight of numbers across half-back. Yep. They're bringing the ball forward with no pressure at all from the forward Melbourne players. Rocker from 55. Distance won't be a problem. But the accuracy is very questionable. It's interesting that setup. If you decide to play a spare man back at the centre bounces, really, obviously, the opposition have got a spare man at their end. If you get the, the ball clear out of the centre bounce, you're probably worse off. You, you are you, worse you off. You almost want the opposition to get it. It's stupid, nearly, really. You nearly concede, don't yeah. you? Hopgood comes interestingly across the ground. Phoebe from the back pocket drifts it up towards uh, the half back flank. And the mark is taken by McDonald. McDonald boys, three of them in action today. Uh, a great day for the McDonald dairy farming family. Scheubel pops it over the top for Graham Wright, off to Paul Williams at half back. Collingwood looking to set something up going across the ground here. Tate through the middle, gives it away to the experienced Grasiska. Grasiska looks down towards half forward. Melbourne trying to do it from behind. Gergic scouting. He's got it now, Brett Gergic. Goes back towards Ingerson. He's in trouble. They've lost it. Rocker goes for goal again. The Pies are alight, but he's away to the left. Well, very early, Melbourne have to do something about their half-forward line because at the moment it is just like a brick wall. For sure, Lee. I think uh, Schwartz has to be the answer to come up and maybe change with, with White. White's just leading to the wrong percentage spot on that occasion, the member side wing. White led wide and the ball was transferred into the true center forward position. There was no contest there at all. Stephen Phoebe again finds Gergic in the back pocket. Kicks into the man on the mark. Went very, very close. He'll get it back again and get another opportunity just to flick it round the body to Shanahan. Jamie Shanahan's at half back. He can set up a chain of handballs here. Seacamp pops it over in towards the middle. Now they're away. Up towards half forward. The right half forward play, but they need a mark. Unable to take it was Uze, and Schwartz slaps it back to him. He keeps it in play just. He's still going out of Uze. Well played, Uze. In towards full forward. Farmer! Go on and kick a goal in your 50th game. That was great finessing by Uze out here, and Schwartz keeping the ball alive. They knew it was in their forward part of the ground. 
And that's one thing Schwartz might have the edge over Mark Richardson, that early three or four yards mm. to get that front position. But we see here Schwartz kept the ball in the line of Uze. He over finessed in this situation, got away from his opponent in Burns. A well-centered kick, he kicked it high, enough elevation, gave Farmer. A little bit of body use there, kept him in front and played on and kicked the goal. Very good goal by Melbourne. So Collingwood make a flying start as they did against Sydney, but now Melbourne gets their first through 50 game of Jeff Farmer to start to peg them back. McDonald, he sat over it for a long time. Comes out wide. Prasiska will bounce it towards half forward. Not a kind bounce for Melbourne. Good one for the Pies, though. In towards a Rocker and Co. once again. Gergic has got front spot and he tumbles it back to the middle. Only as far as the monkey. Back he goes to Gavin Krasiska. In over 50, a big pack of players here, including the Rockers. Anthony beautifully to Nathan Buckley, and he will go. Delightful stuff. Yes, it looks like Nathan Buckley is going to be doing the centre bounces, but opposed to Paul Hopgood getting in towards half forward. And uh, that's just the kind of result they want. Might not be as high a possession game if you're playing forward of the ball, but there to finish. There's a big pack of players, really could have gone anywhere, but Rocker was a really very good quick hand pass under pressure. 14 points the margin. And that's where about the centre bounce, Sandy. You've got Wawon at one end, Burns at the other end. They're the spare players. Melbourne yeah. persisting with this tactic, uh, which at this point I don't think is really helping their cause. Monkhorst won it. He just flicked it back to Buckley, who looks down towards uh, Sav Rocker. That's when you want That's when you want your man back. You want to lose the centre bounces. There he is. He finds his skipper on half-back. Careful, Patterson. You could give away 50 here, and he has. Now, this is where Melbourne, they have to really use the ball across the ground a little bit. It's no use kicking the ball long to your half-forward line when you know you're outnumbered. They've got to really use the loose player back to try and generate the run through the midfield. That's really what the tactic's all about. Such is exactly what Viney's done. Gergic is in the middle. Let's go with a long bomb to half-forward. Monkhorst came in from the side. Jimmy Steins in game number 250 adds a behind. And also when Steins is pushing forward lead, he must come at the ball carrier to get Monkhurst out of that danger zone as he did on that occasion. It was left to uh, Jimmy Steins to do the crumbing, but he's really got to be a disciplined role. If, if Steins gets free, he's got to be used to make Monkhurst man up in the one-on-one -on -one situation. Sean Smith, you can see, uh, running the interchange boys. His chance will come a little bit later on as Burns gives it to Wright. Comes towards centre wing. Tape is forced to defend. He loses it. McDonald blasts a long bomb back in towards the high flyers at full forward. Where are the scouters? It's going to be David Schwartz. Around he swings. He's like the Titanic as he swings around. Not quite far enough. Yes, he really knew what he was doing then, David Schwartz. But the Collingwood player just got close enough to him to really pressure the kick. He couldn't quite just turn marginally he really had to almost kick the ball straight back over his back rather than over the left shoulder so that uh, forced the error Who's very set? quick James McDonald very quick on the rebound on the uh, on the wing here Mick he turns in a very confined area use the ball well Scotty Burns to bring it back into play tape is ignored Patterson is not off to Graham Wright they try and set something up from half back and Alex McDonald takes the mark Paul Williams in the half forward towards Rocker, Buckley and Co. Now the race is on. The race is on with Scotty Crow. Over the top to Sam. Twist out of trouble and kick a goal. Well, it could well have been a free kick, which just goes to show when you do could have laid the tackle, could McDonald on his direct opponent in Crow. He decided to push him and push him off balance. The loose ball came to Rocker and he kicked the goal. But in situations like that, as we see here, the loose ball comes over the top. Crow runs onto the ball. McDonald decided to push rather than lay the tackle and dispossess the ball. The ball was kept alive into the path of Rocker and Rocker kicks a goal. A little bit fortunate. Two to Sav. Collingwood again, draw clear, 26 to 8. Midway during this first term. Steins goes it alone and wins it. Viney takes it from Ragoni. Todd's kick up towards half forward. Almost the one-hander to Jeff White. Down towards Uze on left half forward. 
And it's William is Mal Michael. Interesting that choice to play White at centre half forward and uh, Schwartz at full forward. I, I just don't think Jeff White looks like uh, capable of marking at centre half forward often enough. Uh, I think uh, the body uses Schwartz much better up there. I guess they'll alternate as the game goes on, but just at the moment, not enough ground level contest result after the marking attempt. Well, he won that and he got it to Phoebe who finds Irvine. It's interesting you see in that setup then, Sandy. As soon as Phoebe looked the ball, and no doubt it's a set play or a principle of Melbourne, they look back to try to create space for a handball. On that occasion, there was no one there for Melbourne for Phoebe to give to. He assessed his options, a little bit of poise, a cool head in a tight situation, found Viney free and found him, and here's the chance for Viney to kick a goal. And he kicked a couple so far this season. A chance for his first today. Looks pretty good. Melbourne boys like it. Todd Viney gets his first. And the Demons at second. They close the gap to 12 points. They just look uh, like they're hanging in there, Melbourne. Uh, Collingwood, they've got a couple of goals lead. But I think they've just got the couple of scoring shots from very, very limited opportunities to keep the uh, margin on the scoreboard a fair bit closer than I would think general play is at the moment. Two straight kicks in it. Nine minutes remaining in the first quarter. Steins and Monkhorst, the big men to do battle again. Steins wins it, but it's a socket down towards the right half forward for Collingwood. Williams v Phoebe. Williams wins it. Good recovery by Nathan Buckley as he looks down towards a rocker and Shanahan. Both aiming for a free kick, neither getting it. Some shepherding for Ingerson. Unable to pick it up. Well, you and could see what was going through the minds then of Ingerson and Seacat. Neither yeah. of them were quite sure which player to uh, should go for the ball. Uh, very difficult when you're running away from goal. And I think the right decision was made. Ingerson was coming across the line and he at least was able to force the ball out of bounds. And as you speak, Lee, the change. Tony Francis comes on for his first game of the year, replacing young Fuller. Well, he'll be like a cat on a hot tin roof for Tony Francis. Very, very excited about getting into the thick of things once again. Here's Krasiska. But uh, chopping it off was Jimmy Steins. Plays on Jim to half-back, finds Leon Shelley. He dashes away from one end of the round to the other. Lightning fast, down towards half-forward. Michael does well to edge out Uze. Scotty Russell does the roving work. Pushes further forward. They're in trouble now, Collingwood. Locked up oh, between centre wing and Melbourne's left half forward. Interesting a move to use Adam Uze as a, a full forward line goal kicker. He's been playing up around midfield, occasionally across half back, and been an exceptionally high uh, ball winner for uh, Melbourne. So that's a. Uh, a different use of Uze today. He's averaging 19 possessions a game. So today, as a goal kicker, early. Schwartz up very early. Interesting. Collingwood have also pushed Tate forward so that uh, they're not outnumbered in their forward half here. Down towards half forward for Collingwood. Uh, Where well, Woden was the fly, couldn't take the mark. Graham Wright does on centre wing. He goes short, that's okay. Tate's got it, he spears a pass in towards the 50. Go Buckley quickly, gets onto a ball, he's got an open goal, and he goes for it. No one at home for Nathan Buckley, but uh, in his anxiousness, he pulls it to the left. He was always going to go from right to left. He's got that natural hooking yeah. action, Buckley, and to really have to hoof the ball 55, 60 metres. So he was always going to kick the ball across the body. Couldn't quite keep on line. Hop good to Phoebe. Oh, he's put the car in reverse. It's a little dangerous. It's a little dangerous. The Shanahan hand pass has put his captain under the pump. He's been pinged, and uh, just as Brent Gergich was away... He needed a vision mirror, Sandy, but he didn't have him. <laughs> in a situation like that, Todd Viney received the ball, but he bounced it within three steps. He didn't yeah. have to do that. Patterson short. Now there's 50. Because Tate went down. And this sure is going to be a gimme dog. Something happened near the man on the mark. Uh, obviously, Todd Viney was on the mark, but I, I didn't quite see what happened. Umpire obviously did. 
This is one thing that Collingwood certainly done over the last three or four occasions. They've played, they've really jumped into the game, they put scoreboard pressure on the opposition, and they're certainly putting themselves in a winning position today. Interesting, uh, what Patterson's doing, the goal kicking method. Mick Mark, the position on the ground, about five metres in front of the goal square there. Which I think it's going back about ten steps, walk in six, jog in four, and kick. It's like Michael Holding. And he kicks the goal. So the D's have given one away there, I'm afraid. And Collingwood goes further ahead. 5-3, plays 2-2. Two, two. But that's the kind of tackling pressure the Collingwood forward line, because they are outnumbered uh, forward of the ball, Melbourne. They have to hold on to it a little bit to try and use the ball to bring it out of defence. Just a little bit unlucky there, of course. Viney just didn't realise that there was a bloke on his tail. And... Uh, but the 50-metre penalty, that was really costly. Great defensive play by tape, though. Fourteen plays, 33. The margin now up to 19 points in favour of the Pies. Moncourt couldn't take it. Steins goes three times. Kicks it down to half forward. Connor would have the numbers, or they did have. It'll be OK. Crow comes away, but he kicks wide. Farmer is the only one on centre wing for the Dees. Tries to draw the player and... Well, you have your heart in your mouth, don't you, with young Jeffrey? But he continues to hassle and pressure, and that was good. On Graham Wright, it finishes out of bounds on centre wing. Yes, really right about that. Uh, Jeff Farmer, I think he's an instinctive player. I'm never quite sure, Mick, whether he knows what he's going to do half a second ahead. <laughs> but the reasoning, because of that lead, Collingwood way the numbers were back there. That's when you've got to look inside, because that's where you know Melbourne players will be. You've got to yep. transfer the ball and get into that part of the ground. Williams to half forward. Rocker wants a kind bounce. Tries to slap it out to accommodate McDonald. Idea was right, but just ran out of room. That was an interesting scenario then. Tony Francis actually called Anthony Rocker to come and let allow him the path to run under the loose ball. Usually it's a team rule in most clubs that if the boy coming away from goal, he accepts the ball and handballs into the path of the overlapping player. On that occasion, it was different. Steins again. Just a deft little palm, and it's OK to go Ragoni. Ragoni's a long kick. Schwartz couldn't take it. Monkhurst tidies up at the back. A little bit of finesse by the monkey. Off to Richardson. Up towards right half forward. Buckley loses it. Phoebe clears. Schwartz a one-hander. Almost. Now he needs assistance. And he's got it in the form of Travis Johnston. Up to half forward. Uze squabbles with White over it. White still going. Now he needs Uzo's help. In the back. Uze free kick. The free kick against Burns. Just over anxious in the tackle on that occasion. Certainly pushed Adam Uze in the back. As the replay will suggest. Three goals to Uze so far this year. 55 gamer now of Melbourne. Straight in front. 45 metres out. Doesn't let the Demon supporters down. Adam Uze gets his first. And Melbourne just hang on. Well, I reckon they're doing a pretty good job, Melbourne, to be honest, just to keep within a couple of goals. Yeah. Because Collingwood looked by far the more dangerous team. But Melbourne have just been able to scrounge that three goals. Um, really, their key marking forwards, again, aren't looking like marking the ball. That was a hallmark of their game last week against Richmond that... Basically, amazingly, none of their key forwards took a mark in the entire game. No wonder you get beaten. And I must say, just at the moment, they're not looking much more likely to mark the ball in anything like a contest. But all over the ground now, Lee, we see the man-on-man -man situation. There's no players back in uh, Melbourne's defence or either in Collingwood's defence uh, defense who were spared. Back in the middle. It's interesting, we've got the McDonald boys on each other. It'll be a nice family chat. Williams couldn't take it cleanly. Johnston bursts clear for Melbourne. He's an exciting youngster as Travis kicks down towards Uze. Not paid the mark. Quick to apply the tackle and he hassles Mel Michael. Now he hassles Scotty Burns to the line. There's not too many defenders would have been able to spoil that mark. Uh, Uze was leading into the contest. Ma Michael has a fantastic, that natural defensive ability to wind your fist in in front of the opposition body somehow or other. 
She's got great recovery ability too at ground yeah. level. Keeps the ball alive into the path of Burns. Good defensive pressure by Uze. Got up and reacted and tackled Burns in the appropriate manner. Phoebe gets an awful bounce. Johnston goes in to help him out. Wobbles a short one. It's going to be okay. Finds Regani. He's on centre wing. Goes long again. That's a beautiful kick. Up towards Uze. White is there also. The big man keeps it in. Bends it round the body. This will be a miracle goal. He's kicked it. Oh, don't tell me. That is a team lifter if any one of them. <laughs> well, yes, you said it, Sandy. Wasn't that fantastic? I mean, it really... Not only that, there was all Collingwood players in the goal square. If he hadn't actually kicked the score, they were out of defence. Regoni's looked pretty impressive, isn't he? Kicks the ball long, pretty quick. And Uze certainly making a contest, but the ball across the body. It happens so often in modern footy, it's almost normal. <laughs> Mighty goal from Jeffrey White. And he's actually now playing out of the square too. Lee Schwartz yep. is onto the true centre forward position. Seven points now the margin. After Collingwood snuck clear at one stage, leading by 19. Down towards uh, Alex McDonald. He's in front of his brother and he's clear. Pops it across the ground. Difficult for Williams. Oh, delightfully done by Rocker. Just popped it across to Williams. He might give it back to him. He does. They've got to give a little ground here to Krasiska. He'll try to set something up. Scotty Crow is lurking on left half forward. And he'll have a shot 50 metres out. Just waiting out there, Scotty Crow, wasn't it? Yeah. If the ball came to this side, he was always waiting in space on his own. And eventually, it was good composure by those Collingwood forwards to maintain possession under pressure. A good build-up too, merely because krasiska has been the player who's trying to get into the centre corridor on his dominant left yeah. side. And he's ran into that part of the ground, the centre corridor, three or four occasions. And I think the team, the players forward to the ball, the Collingwood teammates are certainly aware of that situation. And he's been used. So here's Scotty Crow, a former Hawk. He's booted four goals so far this season. Started that one left and was never going anywhere else. Well, you look forward to the play, and I reckon David Schwartz, even before the game, he was going to be a key player. He really has to be able to just take a handful of marks to kick his two or three or four goals, I suspect, for Melbourne to be able to kick a winning score. Phoebe to himself. And then gathering more distance to the outer side. Did well. It was a fine grab by Wawoden. Off to Matthew Phoebe. Up towards left half forward. Schauble doing the work from behind. So too was Scotty Burns. But he locks up Farmer. Back to Schauble again. Gets the hand pass away. Krasiska has been busy so far in this quarter. Tape goes back to Schauble. Krasiska. Oh, they're setting it up now for McDonald. He goes long in towards half forward. Rocker. They're both there. The boys neither can take it. Picked up by Hopgood. And he bounces his way across half back. Hopgood out of trouble for Melbourne. The centre wing. Crow could have marked it. Taken by Richardson. It's okay for Collingwood. He passes into Watson. He spent it too soon. Goes again to Shane Watson. Gets it out to Rocker. Rocker gives it off to Williams. Here's a goal coming out for Collingwood. He can amble in if he wants to. And does. Oh, he's missed it. Oh, my hat, says Alex McDonald. And Jamie Shanahan says, sir, it's not that easy. Well, I think two things happened there. Certainly in about 30 seconds ago, when Jeff White fumbled that mark across half forward, they're the kind of marks he fails to take. The body-to-body -body mark where he's got a 60-40 chance. And on the rebound, well, certainly then McDonald uh, had every chance. But I think it was a bit too easy. Mick, he didn't run hard yeah. enough for the goals, I don't think. I think he thought too much about... Oh, this I should kick this one, and uh, the pressure got him. But it was all, also created, Lee, by the bad kick by Hopgood coming out of defence. Yeah. Turn the ball over in the midfield area. Phoebe finds Shanahan. He finds Gergic. Now Viney in the middle. Can Melbourne make them pay Gergic towards half forward and Big Jim? Still 55 out. And that's a long way for Jim Steins. To Jeffrey White. Fisted clear, waiting down in front is Buckley. Delightfully done, he's got tape on the outer side. Jamie Tate looks down towards a right half forward. Now Alex McDonald will ponder again the thoughts of a goal kicker. Passes towards Rocker, he's got Phoebe, lost him. Phoebe gets the hand pass away. Ingerson looks wide towards McDonald. He's got his brother right on his hammer. 
He's run out of fence by Grigic. He's been uh, very impressive at this stage. Brent Grigic, he certainly does a lot of flair and a lot of speed as that running defender, uh, Sandy. But at the moment, uh, as I say, the marking forwards of Melbourne are just not marking it. Now, as fortunately for them, Collingwood probably aren't marking the contest either at this point. Inside the last minute, the advantage is paid because Jim Stein's caught one in that uh, ruck duel. Bounces towards Jeff White. What sort of a bounce does he get? Okay, the big man does well. Out to McDonald. He should be over to goal in the dying seconds of the quarter. It's high, but it's away to the left. Yeah, it's those two players you just spoke about, Lee Gurdjieff and also, also Stephen Phoebe. They're mm. getting a lot of the ball out of that defensive part of the, the ground for Melbourne. But they've got to use the ball more productively and effectively on the way through. They've got to find targets and put scoreboard pressure on Melbourne because what they're doing at the moment, they're not finding the targets. The marking forwards aren't taking marks and it makes it very easy for Collingwood defence to run it out. It's interesting, Brent Bridge is 192 centimetres, but he's playing on Tony Francis, uh, so he's basically playing as a small defender at almost key position height. Richardson to right, but all too late. It's quarter time here at the MCG. A fascinating first term with Collingwood. Kicking away early, Melbourne pegging them back. And now just an eight-point ball game. Two old campaigners there getting together, Graham Wright and Gavin Krasiska. Shane Wawoden, one of the exciting young brigade from Melbourne. Then comes Neil Danaher. Spent last night with his brother Terry, who was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Now a legendary coach with the Wagga Tigers. And there's another coach, Tony Shaw, coming down to Jesse's Pies. They lead by five to Melbourne, 4-3. Here we go then, the second quarter of the MCG, this round eight clash between two great rivals in the competition, Melbourne and Collingwood. Collingwood have an eight-point advantage, but we've got a long, long way to go. Steins in game number 250 up against Damien Monkhorst. In game number 181, Buckley goes for a roundhouse right, misses. Williams to Krasiska is OK. Wobbles a short one down towards a right half forward. Alex McDonald sneaks clear oh. of his brother. It's an interesting hand pass. Oh, my hat. The dairy farmers won't like that as Ragoni pumps it along to full forward. Uze couldn't take the mark, but he's quick to lay the tackle on Michael. The ball spills free. Farmer, the 50-gamer, loses it. Collingwood should clear through. Scotty Burns gets it across to another. Scott in Crow, and he's away to the outer side. Towards Buckley, who's in front of Hopgood, and he marks clearly. Long kick up towards left half forward. Ingerson only had the one hand and almost used it effectively. Phoebe, a fickle bounce. A cruel bounce in the end. Sandy, there's that backward handball. It's so important to find the target because if you miss the target in that situation, it's amazing how Collingwood players will all be streaming forward onto the loose ball. And soften it, Mick. Don't thump it too hard. A lot of players want to thump the backward hand pass. You've got to soften it so it allows the player to move into it towards his goal. Anthony Rockwell, we saw there contesting the ruck work. This is the kick of Hopgood. Back towards the centre. Schwartz paddles it off to Ragoni, but he's under real pressure from Richardson. He'll go again, Guy Ragoni. Gets it out back to Hopgood. Almost clear. Gergic, it's OK. To half forward, Burns chops off the kick by McDonald. Scotty Burns comes wide. The McDonald's are everywhere. This is Alex. To right half forward. Buckley's 55 out. Casually gets boot to ball. He's kicked the goal, has he? <laughs> well, it's bounced back. I think Sam thought it was going to go through, but it bounced back. And that allowed Shanahan to defend. I'd like well, to see the percentages of the drop punt that usually rolls yeah, end over end. It very rarely bounces back into play. It was just an unfortunate circumstance for that, Nathan Buckley and Collingwood. Damn oval ball. Unbelievable. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, Jamie Shanahan couldn't believe it. And again, it was good defensive pressure across midfield by Collingwood. Uh, Melbourne were trying to extricate the ball. Eventually, they just had to quick it, kick it long and quick. And Scott Burns just was able to float back. And that started the, uh, the launch forward. Ingerson in front, Steins waiting down to do the roving work. Big Jim does well. Off he goes. Aragoni kicks up towards half forward. Michael comes charging out. Firmer at the back. Jeffrey in game number 50. The wizard. 
can't complete it. Well, Sandy, that scoring opportunity was all about because Anthony Rocker got up in the defensive manner, but he didn't punch the ball back. It came over the back of the pack. That's where the Melbourne free players were. Trouble all for of a tape. sudden, they were scored like a pressure. wrist injury to Tate. Trouble for Jamie Tate. His teammate had a look at him and said, straight off, called for... Uh... I wonder if this is where you run the stretcher on. I would reckon you should be laying down on the ground, broken wrist or not, making him run the stretcher on because Collingwood are now a man short. Dead right, Lee. Jeff White takes the kick in. Still a long way from home, but he's got a couple of options short. Should have done better than that. Bad yeah. use. Yeah, bad use. Moncourse did well, though, to affect the spoil. Phoebe trying to tidy up again for the Ds. A worm burner in the half. Oh, that's better. Finds his captain and Todd Viney. It's too far out. He's going to have to uh, think about it. Stein just clear. Can he see him? Yes, he can. While all that's happening, Johnny Russo is checking out that wrist problem with Jamie Tate. The big monkey's got to be aware of that situation because Steins will drift forward and play that floating type marking forward. He's got to tighten up his game in that area of the ground. 46 metres out. He's uh, started it right and it stays right. Yeah, I mentioned this, uh, this stretcher thing. Uh, when Tate hurt his wrist and uh, this may be how it happened just fall flat straight arm unfortunately looked like the wrist may have given way but if you actually uh when you go off on the stretch you're off for 20 minutes but i suspect jamie tapes off for the day yeah and uh, just that scoring opportunity was partly set up i suspect by the fact that colin will men short buckley kicks towards godden and it's over the line well you feel for jamie's obviously in a heck of a lot of pain Certainly had a lot of injuries over the last couple of years as Jamie yeah, Tate. He's had a rotten run, hasn't he? Rotten run. However, play goes on. Matthew Phoebe. Oh, no mark! But a mighty fly by Jeffrey White. Smokers on the ground. Oh. He can jump, Jeff White. Still to take a mark, though. Schwartz, Uze and White have yet to mark the ball. He almost took this one. That would have been a Cadbury's mark of the year, I suspect, Sandy, but you've got to bring him down. you got to hold him. Schwartz, Farmer again. Oh, that was beautifully done. Cap it off, Jeffrey! There's game number 50. How was that, Mickey McGuan? Yeah, that's what the type of play we've become expected to see from Jeff Farmer. He's just got that great awareness in that tight situation. But to keep his feet, found, he lost his balance, of course, when he won the possession. But to get up in the recovery, he did. As we see here from the replay, Schwartz got front position. The loose ball was there, but he lost his balance, had the awareness and presence of mind that knew there was a gap to go through. It's agility, the isn't goal. it? Agility then to get up when he lost his feet very quick. Yeah, sensational goal. That's the second for a day, for the day. The end of the line for Jamie Tate. Not so for the Wizard, who's kicked a mighty goal. Johnny Russo, can you just confirm his problem? Yeah, it's definitely a broken left arm or broken left wrist, Sandy, and uh, he's gone straight back into the rooms, as you can see, and won't take any further part in the game, but certainly in a lot of pain. Yeah, he's had a rotten run. Thank you for that. Jim Stein's out of the middle, but it's Collingwood who take it away through Patterson. Down towards Harford. They need a steadier now. Melbourne are coming at them. Shanahan's kick is only short. It's effective enough, and uh, Brett Gergic is quite happy to see it over the line. They're within a point. Do I'm impressed with that kid? He's six-game of league uh, football, Gergic, but Gergic. he does everything right. He just looks a really impressive player. Very composed. From the throw-in, Matthew Phoebe. Off to Guy Ragone. Gee, that's a bad pass. Patterson. On the outside of the boot, does well to Rocker, to Buckley, here's Danger. Ran into a couple, didn't see them. Crow does well, Scotty Crow, 38 metres out. Can't emulate Jeffrey Farmer at the other end of the ground. I wonder if that was the captain's call, Mick. Uh, certainly, Ragoni had the ball and gave it to, uh, to Viney, but Patterson was about six inches from him <laughs> on the chase. Yeah, very um, low percentage. I think sometimes that was obviously a, a hit to the voice. Didn't have a chance to just have a look exactly uh, what position he was. Phoebe to Owoden. I just sense it's a very important stage of the game now. Most Collingwood midfielders, Williams, Russell and Buckley, they're getting forward of the contest, whereas if they're not winning the ball, they're susceptible on the rebound. Two points the margin, Mick, favouring Collingwood. 
Rocker, that was Anthony, but this is Smoker. Even though they're not allowed at the MCG. Here's Viney. Putting Melbourne inside 50. Now the Wizard will be somewhere abouts again, and so will Jeffrey White. Michael to right. Graham Wright in trouble. Off he goes to Scotty Crow. That was okay. And Collingwood again, head towards Buckley territory. We've got players down on left half forward. It's Pugsley just come off on is. the ground, Sandy. Yep. Fresh off the bench. Replacing tape. Styles. Good mark by Big Jim. He's played it off without knowing what's happening next, though. That was Wowoden. It's going to be okay. Phoebe. Now, what's he got downfield? May have to come in board. And that oh. does so. He does so, but it wasn't good. Collingwood may make him pay yet again. Burns kicks to right half forward. And the mark is taken by Anthony Rock. Oh, I don't know if Roy Woden put his hands up then. May he was backing back. He was in a dangerous position, but I uh, think he really had to go for the mark. I don't think he just was sure what was around him. And just really bailed out of the contest at the very last minute. Mm, you have to make body contact, contact in that situation, Lee, when you're pushing mm. back into land unknown. Irrespective of the as consequences. Tough as it is. Irrespective of the consequences, you've got to put your body in a situation where your mind may fear to tread. Fuller back on the ground for Collingwood. 48 metres is the distance. Yes. No problems there for Anthony Rocker. So Collingwood get the steadier they needed. And again, it's an eight-point ball game. Well, they got that on the rebound, but really, when they were coming forward from Phoebe, uh, David Schwartz, I guess he's just his fitness level to play centre-half forward all games a problem. He had to get across and make a, just make an option along the boundary line, but he didn't get across, and there was nothing on, so Phoebe tried to go back, back inboard, and once it was turned over in the centre corridor, well, they're in real trouble. The Rocker boys have got three between them. Anthony one, Severio two, Collingwood have six. Monkhorst wins it again, down to Buckley, a penetrating kick to the forward line. Gergich defends, but it goes out the back door to Ingerson. <laughs> he almost lost his head, but they missed. Shanahan spears a pass to Steins, off he goes to Paul Hopgood. From a standing start, he pumps it high. Farmer makes good ground. The Wizard will want to go. He does. He says to Smoker, get down there, but the bounce is awful. Awful for him, but lovely for Schauble. And again, he finds Buckley on the other side. And Buckley's starting to become a very influential player. Maybe Neil Denner have to make the, make, may have to make a change in that mismatch. Hopgood opposed to Buckley. Here's Russell taking it from Monkhorst into full forward. That was too easy. Severio Rocker will be trying for number three. Well, you could just sense then when Farmer won the ball across half forward, he looked up, he didn't see White. White was five metres behind mm. his direct opponent in Schwartz. Well, you've got to come and meet the ball and give your man up the field some sort of option when you're streaming forward like that. I think he tried to chip it in the, into the path of Smoker, and uh, again, the oval ball <laughs> bounced back over Smoker's head. Didn't sit, didn't run on for him, and uh, certainly uh, Collingwood uh, are rebounding off half back and giving their forwards every opportunity. He makes no mistake. Sam's got three. Yes, and he led to the right space then, uh, Rock. It wasn't a fantastic pass. Didn't get right out in front of him to allow him just to run into the line of the ball. But once you get back into the centre corridor, oh, that's a good play. It opens a whole forward line up. The, the, this side of the ground, the near side of the camera will be open. And Rocker went to it. As I say, ball wasn't right out in front of him, but uh, Shanahan was looking for Rocker's body. And uh, in between, Rocker got the best position. Well, they got to within one point. It's now back to 14. 5-5 five, five, plays 7-7. Seven, seven. Steins wins it. Down to half four towards Farmer. Graham Wright's got the job on him, but he's darting and weaving, and he's still going. The Wizard is still going, but he's lost. Oh, that's rubbish. He wasn't tackled. How can you have a free kick against you if a tackle's not laid? John Russo? Ask John there? Russo. Yeah, I tend to agree with you, Lee. I mean, the tackle was certainly very soft and didn't retard him at all. He just kept running. 
Smoker almost smothers the Burns kick. Farmer gets another chance. His hand pass is poor. Intercepted by Russell. Wright screaming for it. He's ignored. He's more direct. Schwartz will come in from the side. He does, but he can't take the mark. Here's an opportunity for Collingwood now as they push towards the pocket. Full of pounce on it, but he lost it. And they finish up with a behind. Yes, now if you're down there, John, I mean, he bounced the ball, but it, it just wasn't retarded. I mean, you do have to still lay a normal tackle, don't you? Have a look at this. Yeah, that's exactly right, no Lee. Tackle. I mean, there is no tackle Can there. He certainly the breaks. It's a momentary grab, and that's the best you could call it. So uh, I'd agree with you. No tackle shouldn't have been penalised for incorrect disposal. J just to, uh, from the rule, it's not just a matter of touching the player who's bounced the ball. You do have to lay a legitimate tackle, don't you? That's exactly right. Thank you, John. Here's Phoebe out the back door for Melbourne. Schwartz does the shepherding. And again, no one to go to. Same thing again, no one to go to, so he's had to kick the ball on the boundary. Straight to Graham Wright. Back to David Schwartz. Stein's there also. And Lee, that's Julie because I think they're trying to get David Schwartz into the game. And he's sort of playing like a floating ruck rover at this stage. Yeah. Pushing but, forward now. But they've just got no target across half forward. I mean, it's just really. This is dangerous too. Good tackle. Good tackle. That was Fuller. An excellent tackle by the youngster, and the door opens for McDonald. Alex, just outside 50. He ignores the leads, he goes for home. And the skirting across the face of goal is Severio Rocker. Certainly once he, uh, he gets away from Shanahan's body contact, he is quicker in the surge for the ball. Plays on, tries to bend it round, but is unsuccessful. So important in that situation, when you do get a mark there about sort of 10 metres out from goal on your non-dominant side, you really have to think your way through the situation. Yeah. I think Severo Rocker probably was a little, a little bit too quick and should have, you know, a bit more poise in that situation because they are critical goals if you can kick them. Just over 10 minutes remaining in this second quarter. Collingwood again threatening to sneak away. a get out option yes uh, Phoebe and Francisca look here now. look at this three play. Collingwood players around that ball Anthony Rocker well he'll be disappointed with that because Uze will come away center it Jeff White the target beaten Lux of fortune however they'll get away with it White down the ground to Phoebe now they're starting to run Finished with Seacamp, long kick to the forward line. Uze is there, Viney is there. Todd Viney. <laughs> the Lux of fortune. It looks like Bridget's uh, Gertrick has gone forward now. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a good move. They need someone in their forward 50, uh, Melbourne. Uze was giving you a little bit down there, and I think Uze may have actually gone now into the back half. So just the versatile coaching by Neil Danner, just to swap those two over to let Uze be the runner out of defence and see if Gertrick can uh, kick a goal. They've made a double change too as we speak. He's kicked that. And Lee, I think the answer could be uh, Sean Smith to go to that full forward post. I think he's just come onto the ground. They've brought Steins off. Jeff White will go to the ruck now. I think Sean Smith, a lumping, uh, the looping sort of type of marking forward that he is. A good build up here. They got the ball in the centre corridor. They probably overused the ball probably on one occasion to see Cam, but the ball was given down there quick. Mel Michaels finding front position more often than not than his direct opponent. A little bit of luck. Finally got front and square to the pack. Quick kick, found Gurgic. Gurgic went back and kicked a goal. Brent Gurgic. Gurgic. <laughs> Gets his first. Big Jim. This double team That's will have an spell. interesting effect how this affects them, because I'm sure White now will try and push him towards centre half forward after the ruck work to see how this change of approach in the midfield. Well, McDonald's socket off the ground, but to the wrong end, down towards Gergic. Gergic has got it. Around the body he goes. Farmer! Yeah, that was a fantastic bit of play by Gergic, which somehow or other, he was not in the best position, but he wound his way around the Collingwood defender to get the hands on the ball. Just a magnificent bit of play, I thought. Let's have a look at this. Didn't quite mark the ball, but somehow just touched the ball and into his hand. Gee, he's a classy look at play, this kid. And Graham White's actually losing body contact with Jeff Farmer. Yeah. Maybe they should change. And here goes the Wizard with another one. 
Scott Bruins may be the answer to go to Farmer, I think, Lee, in this situation. But it was all brought about by a lucky kick forward. Alex McDonald streamed off the centre square and kicked the ball forward. As we see here, the ball, the loose ball come free. It was Alex McDonald who got the ball. But as you said, Lee, terrific poise and got the, ball, got the hands in with the loose ball there. But Farmer just lost the body contact from Graham Wright. And he's finding front position. Very exciting player. The interesting thing about Farmer is he often is a small marking player, isn't he? He sort of he doesn't necessarily just play for the crumbs. He tries to get on, on the end of the loose kick, and therefore his defensive uh, opponent has to be aware of uh, spoiling the marking contest, not only the ground level coverage. And Monkhurst is off the ground, and Matthew Francis going into the ruck position against White. Four point ball game. Melbourne back in business. Trying out wide towards Buckley for Collingwood. He kicks the half forward. Almost the mark. No, it is not going to be taken. Phoebe scoops it up and gives it away to Viney. The D's out of trouble again. Ragoni tumbling a punt to half forward. Mark not held. Scotty Burns pounces on it. Tries to shovel it forward to Schauble. Schauble gives it away to Williams. He takes on a couple and wins. Kicks towards the centre wing. McDonald goes down. Russell goes down, and there'll be a free kick. Yeah, against Scotty Russell, who's holding his opponent off the line of the ball. Certainly a free kick to McDonald. Short to Hopgood. Schwartz is off, too. Looks like uh, Bishop has come on for Melbourne. So they're ringing in the changes. Here's Uze on centre wing. To left half forward. And Gergic again. In the centre half forward. Seacamp unable to get a run at it. Goes once more. Smith down at the bottom of the pack. Michael couldn't take it. Scotty Burns gets the hand pass out. They're not out of trouble yet. This is Graham Wright. Close to the boundary line. Under pressure. Kicks wide to the wing. Waiting down is Fuller. Can't get clear of McDonald, but he'll go again. Gergic a solid buck. McDonald did well to Gergic. Off towards Smith. Shepherding sees him clear, but there's been some holding. Terrific shepherd there by Uze. Gave the half for Smith to run into, but the free kick was given. A legal tackle by Alex McDonald. Thought the advantage may have been paid then because Smith was away. Now Farmer's uh, alone at half forward, but that kick drops well short. That's a poor kick. Yeah. It's very hard to kick it a long way to a small player, isn't it? Because if there's any pressure, he's going to be able to go and be outreached. Richardson towards centre wing. Buckley, beautifully done. Now here's trouble for Melbourne. There is real trouble because Schäuble can lope in and goal. 40 metres out. Starts at left, but it's OK. He's kicked a badly needed goal for Collins. Yes, well, it was really a fantastic... Uh gather of the loose ball and the contest win here by Buckley. Have a look at this. Who's going to win the contest? Buckley comes out with it all of a sudden. Shawbull has taken the punt and pushed a long, long way forward. If Melbourne had won that contest, well, I guess uh, Shawbull's opponent would have been in trouble, but a good goal to steady the ship for Collingwood. Monkey's not relaxing. And actually, Shawbull's gone to centre forward, Sandy. Collingwood again open up a 10-point break. They have their noses in front, but they can't open up a match-winning lead as yet. Francis unable to take it cleanly. Down towards Schäuble, as Mick said at half four. Now here's trouble. Buckley onto the left foot, but he'll pull it back. Needs a rocker mark in the forward line. Or Fuller to do the scouting. They're both there, but neither can take it. Ooh. Fuller now. That was almost a throw. Rocker in trouble. Gets it out. Williams written into the ground. No free kick. Well, Johnny Russo, there might have been a couple there almost, and Paul Williams has got plenty to say. Well, certainly the last one with Paul Williams, there's no doubt what would have been going through the umpire's mind was whether the tackle propelled him forward. Here we see the uh, replay coming up now as that Anthony Rocker gets the ball out. A, a little lucky, John. The Melbourne player got his arms pinned, yeah. and the umpire called play on. He uh, could have easily free kicked him for holding the ball. I but agree with you, Lee, yes. Here goes Ragoni. In trouble. Phoebe. A 360, then heads towards Wowoden. Schäuble uses him as a stepladder. Wowoden to Travis Johnston. Hand pass had to be spot on. It wasn't quite, it was very close. Burns to Francis. Back to half forward. 
failed to spoil. Neither of the Melbourne defenders actually uh, tried to punch back. Pugsley kicks in towards centre half forward. Big pack of players there, including the Rocker Boys and Shanahan. C camp is wide. Watson chases him. He gains probably 25 metres before pushing over the line. Seacamp's done a particularly good job on Shane Watson. Shane Watson yeah. jumped out of the guns last Friday night and kicked three in the first quarter. Yep. But at this stage of the game, he hasn't had no influence whatsoever on the game. There's Monkey on the bench. His time will come. Matthew Phoebe comes in board to Jeff White. Chops his way out of trouble. And delivers well. He overlaps on too, Sandy. Yeah. Johnston perhaps held it a little too long. Down towards Sean Smith. Collin with the numbers again to clear. Williams may set it up for Burns on half back. He's told to go and away goes Scotty Burns. Up over the centre towards half forward. Rocker comes charging out. That was Anthony. Unable to take it cleanly. Neither could Jamie Shanahan to start with. Puts a bit of pressure on his teammates as he goes out wide. Finds Travis Johnston. Comes in board to Stephen Phoebe. Call to play on. Sean Smith, fresh legs on the ground. He's on left half forward and he's claimed. He loses it to Scotty Russell. Russell back into the middle of Francisco. It's a fascinating duel, this one. From one end of the ground to the other. Watson, held for so long, finally breaks free and goes short to Fuller. The last two equations that Sean Smith's gathered the ball across the forward 50 metre area for Melbourne. He's decided to bring the ball back into the centre mm. corridor. Low percentage play knowing that there's no way to numbers around that ball. You're probably better off hitting to the boundary or just hitting to the ball because more often than not it'll be the Melbourne teammates who are running onto the loose ball forward of the ball rather than giving the defensive team the chance to win possession. It's the basis of leading wide out towards the forward flank when if the turnover happens then the team is already in attack almost. Brad Fuller misses his opportunity to kick his first for the day. That's one thing about kicking the ball to the leading forward when he's going wide and up towards half forward. Do the opposition tend to be in attack if you lose possession? Kicking the ball long towards the front of the goal square is at least drawing the ball, you know, where it's a long, long way from the opposition goal. And I think Melbourne have suffered a little bit from going to the lead and getting the ball turned over. Phoebe. Farmer. Oh, here's excitement. Look at this hand pass. That is sensational for Travis Johnston, and he should kick a goal. Sensational. Here's the exciting machine, uh, excitement machine is Jeff Farmer. He gets to the percentage spot for a crumbing forward. That's the bottom line. And now his direct opponent, Luke Godden, as we'll see by the replay. They come out of defence Melbourne. The bottom line is that we see Farmer. He decides to go to the front of the pack. Luke Godden was in a bit nowhere situation. He went to the percentage spot, gave the handball out to Travis Johnson, who overlapped at the right time and ran into an open goal. It's a long strider, Johnson, isn't he? he? He really covers the ground, but he never really looks like he's running quickly because he really... And takes that such long strides. Reminds me very much like David Rhys Jones the way he covers the ground. Yeah, yeah. Five points again the margin. A very interesting contest unfolding here at the MCG. Five points the margin as we welcome our viewers through ATN in Sydney. Collingwood are the leaders. Melbourne are challenging. Buckley and Hopgood are joking. It's an overcast day in Melbourne, cool day, perfect really for football. And a big crowd, probably well in excess of 60,000. Patterson has a fresh air shot. Smoker pounces on it, gives it to White, who kicks towards Gergic. And he marks on right half forward. Will go long, Brent Gergic, and does. Farmer will be at the back. He's lurking there. Smith also was the flyer. That's his trademark. Certainly comes and meets the ball, does Gergic. He's an exciting player. He's he very composed is. and yeah. he just uh, plays the percentage time when to lead. He has the anticipation and concentration levels are fairly good. Number 11 in the 1996 uh, draft from Geelong under 18s originally. So a bounce, 20 metres out. Farmer! Hope he hasn't done a hamstring. Let's hope he hasn't done a hamstring. He's certainly hobbling. He watches the back of his thigh. Yeah, left hamstring, I think. Or maybe a corky. Yeah, quickly uh, grabbing the back, of the, back of the left. That's it. 
Well, there goes his 50th game. Yeah, he's not too happy. Interesting, Buckley's been pushed back, Mick, to take the, uh, Kick the in. kick-ins. Yes, he's been getting plenty of the ball. Four points to the margin. That's a great kick. Good kick. Oh, a sensational oh. kick. Is that play on? Ooh. Uh, Williams is going to go back and take it. It's an interesting one. Well, the umpire gave him the benefit of the doubt, which is fair enough, but I don't think there's much doubt that Paul Williams had taken the half that, step. That's exactly right. Like that. Anyway, he kicks to half forward. A little too far for Rocker, who was camped underneath. Phoebe goes to Viney on his knees. Leoncelli. First through half back, kicks in towards Smoker. Gee, he had to mark that. that he had to, yep. Yeah. And he was forced to full stretch, uh, the little man. Off he goes to Matthew Phoebe. From the middle. Kicks to half forward. Smith trying to shrug his opponent. Can't do so. Collingwood trying to set something up through Godden. Back to Buckley from a standing start. He looks towards Francis. Well spoiled by White. This is Look the one leg of Rice. Oh! He's heading towards the bench and on one leg. Sandy, just in relation to that Farmer one, as Lee said earlier, it would be much wiser if they just called for the stretcher, took Farmer off on a stretcher, the replacement player can come on and play won't resume until he is back in position. What yes. we saw then was that Melbourne were one short at every contest. But it's like professional golfers. Johnny, not everyone knows the rules. Here goes Smoker. In towards full forward. Oh, Johnston! 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 I like the rock of this kid too. Uh, well, yes. And he's, he's very composed. He, he just does the percentage thing all the time. A young kid of only how many games now has he played? Well, I think he's only played a handful of games. Well, he's yeah, played that's his six games. Six games. But today. he was the first draft choice in last year's draft, so obviously he's regarded as the best eligible player in the draft and uh, comes from my old stamping ground, Chelsea, uh, down in the <laughs> southern oh, suburbs. <laughs> Grandson of Norm Johnson, who played, he was a Fitzroy legend way, way back. You can see the treatment there on uh, Jeff Farmer, left hamstring for sure. What a disappointing blow to Melbourne. Because they've just wrestled the lead. It's and a two-point margin. This ruck work by uh, White has been pretty significant. Yeah. Down towards the forward zone once again for Melbourne. Viney spearing a pass inboard, and that's OK. Smoker takes the mark. Go for a talk. Well, he'll have to let go with the talk. Mick, it's not a high percentage kick, but you've got nothing to lose. This is where Collingwood's height should get back there for sure. Well, Buckley's screaming at his teammates to get back there. They need to worry because he went for the talk. It slewed off the side of the boot. But uh, another big quarter by both sides and a real cliffhanger. Collingwood uh, could manage only three goals in that term, but three goals, five. Melbourne, on the other hand, booted five. In fact, five goals to three. They are two-point leaders at the main chain. The Wizard has his problems. Neil Danaher off to address his charges. We'll take a break here from the MCG, checking the halftime score. The multiple scorers on the ground for Collingwood, Severio Rocker has two, Jeff Farmer has three, and Travis Johnston, two for Melbourne. As we said, it's half time. Melbourne are 9-6. Collingwood are 8-10. Second half is underway. Steins and Monkhorst taken by the former, kicked down towards Gergic, claimed by Schäuble. The ball is held. And there will be a bounce by umpire Matthew Norden. With him today is Stuart Wen and Darren Goldspink. Yesterday at about this time we had the lights on at the MCG. It's again dark, but at the moment, no lights. Seacamp towards the line. Buckley sees it over there with Alex McDonald. And Wo Woden will be keeping uh, Buckley company in this third quarter. Hopgood now down playing small defence against Fuller. And Watson, interestingly, has actually been shifted well up the field, up to a midfield role. So they have rejigged their forward line, Collingwood. Here's a chance for Steins. Kicking towards left half forward. Gergic well out in front. Takes the mark and is quick to play on Deviney. Penetrating kick. Smith the flyer! Wasn't he in the box seat, Sandy? 
That was all about Gergic again meeting the ball. He uh, he certainly comes and meets the ball. He leave. He got two or three metres free of Schwabel, and that's what you got to do when you're playing on the key forward pace. You've got to continually come and present yourself at the ball carrier coming forward. And Gergic is a very promising player, but Sean Smith was certainly in the box seat. He moved quickly, didn't he? Yeah, Gergic has been a very impressive player. I haven't seen him much. I mean, he played a few games last year, but gee, he's been an impressive player this year. And this is no doubt the start Melbourne need. Kick an early goal in the third quarter. Playing in his fifth game for the season. He's only kicked a few. He's kicked four goals so far this year. Now he's kicked five. Just the start they wanted. Well, I guess the important point, that's really one of the few times for the game where a key forward in a genuine contest has just been able to jump up and take the mark. Again, Gurdjieff, as you mentioned, Mickey, led uh, Schorber to the world. This is just the jump. Was it White or was it Smith? They were both coming from different directions. So back in the middle, Melbourne getting first blood in this third quarter. They lead by eight points. Steins. Oh, Woden down towards Gergic. Now he's, he got let it down. now he's got Richardson as his direct opponent. Can he, he, get, quick he, there, I think. he can kick a ball too. Look at this. And how's that from the youngster? He's just got Graham right underneath the flight of the ball. Right, he sort of struggled all day. Uh, first of all, he was opposed to Jeff Farmer, but he's got to make body contact, especially when the ball's deep in uh, their defensive He's not so good on ground. marking players, is he? He's more kind of a ground-level opponent. Run with right. player. And when there's a ball's in the air, he's not too good in that uh, marking situation. Chance to run round, play on, and kick a goal. What a goal, too, to Travis Johnston. And what a start by Melbourne in this third quarter. Well, yes, this last piece of the game, the last half of the second quarter, and this first five minutes all of a sudden they're getting uh, control across the middle of the ground and well we've mentioned many times Gurdjieff he's been just fantastic today and now he's going into half forward and giving him a target and Johnson well he's been uh, pretty good himself also Goals have been hard to kick and he's kicked a couple also I'll be interested to see what actually Mel Michael does on the jumping for forward in uh, Sean Smith knowing that he does play in front of his direct opponent does yeah. he alter his approach knowing that Sean Smith is a good aerialist and he loves that sort of little bit of yardage to jump and leap for the ball Farmer can only sit and watch but the danger signs are up for Collingwood out of the middle it's the D's again Woe Woden's at the bottom of the pack had it lost it Leoncelli working hard and he strikes the tackle gets clear to the outer side Gergic is there and uh, he is providing a marvellous focal point. They've got to stop him. Travis Johnston was again the target. Scotty Russell. They'll be holding the ball. Has to be. Is pinged. I just cannot understand players when they win the ball deep in the opposition's forward line. They have free possession. Playing on in a situation when you're not fully aware of what's on around you, you just got to go back, take the mark, and assess your options yeah. from that point. That split second, isn't it? Just to have a look around you, uh, that split second that you're going to waste if you do play on, certainly uh, that's the uh, risk element. You can't see 360 degrees, can you, Mickey? You've got to have, you've got to have a look first. So uh, It's just a natural thing for the forwards to come and meet, come where the ball was going to land, so there's obviously people around you. Sean Smith, a chance to rip this game wide apart. And he's done exactly that. Collingwood's in trouble. Smith just kicked two. Johnson's just kicked one. They've kicked three goals in three minutes. And it started in the centre square. Certainly they've had the fours to be able to finish for them, but that work of extricating the ball in the centre square, Mick, that ferreting in and out of that uh, the crunch situation, bodies all around the place. Leon Challey, for instance, he was able to extricate himself. So this ground level contest at centre square, very important for Collingwood to get back balanced. Collingwood led by 19 points early in the first quarter. Was McDonald to Gergic, but now it's Watson to Gergic. Now they're down by 20 points. Monkhorst wins it. Smoker takes it out of the centre. He's saying, where is Brent? Brent Gergic, well, he's racing for it now. 
Watson is there with him. Watson gets front spot but runs out of room. Well, just watching them young Brent Gergich then, he was opposed to Shane Watson. He just picks up the reading of the play so quickly. And his initial four or five steps are exceptionally quick. And he's loving it. <laughs> Smile he's no on his enjoying face. it. Boy, so he should. Who could blame him? Yep. Steins and Monkhorst again. Monkhorst slaps it down in front. But it's going nowhere. Melbourne a chance today to move into third spot on the ladder. There's uh, Schwartz, McDonald and Farmer. And interesting again, uh, this uh, ball up over the outer wing. Nathan Buckley's running forward of the ball with uh, with Wawoden. It's a matter of who's going to extricate the ball. I suspect Scott Burns will be the player that Collingwood are hoping that can start getting first hands on the ball in those pack situations. Of course, Siska was the one who slapped it forward. Buckley's gang tackled. He loses it. Johnston towards the line. Krasiska, old hands do well. Wo Woden, lightning hand pass. Ragoni in towards half forward. Two hands. And that was our friend Gergich. In trouble was Fuller. Collingwood were able to maintain possession, however. The Watson chip to Shawbel is okay. Still a long way from home. Kicks inside 50. The lead is on and the pass is okay to Scotty Crow. He wants to go. He thought about it to Graham Wright. He's done some good work today, the young fella, but the runner's out to Gurdjieff straight away. Two hands on the ball. He just seemed to put one hand up uh, for some reason then. Mickey's looked like he could have got a couple on it across half forward and marked comfortably, but that really created the opportunity for Collingwood to rebound from half back. Very important kick here by Scott Crow. Let's see if he pays the ultimate price. Crow from 45 metres. Good looking kick off the boot. Colin will come back. Scotty Crow gets his first for the day. That's what happens when you make a mistake. As Lee said, two hands. He certainly could have went for two hands. Would have marked the ball and all of a sudden it's deep in the Melbourne zone. But the rebound ball, Patterson sets it up. He sees Shane Watson. Good kick here by Shane Watson. Broke up the play, seen Schwarbel free. Schwarbel got back from the man, assessed his options. Crowate led to the open side of the field and got an easy return. Finished well. So the Maggies start to close the gap again. Liam Chelly couldn't take it out of the centre, but the Pies can with a high kick up towards left half forward. Russell scouting, may run out of room. Look at the Phoebe tackle. It is fierce, it is ferocious. Now, what's your decision as Nathan Buckley will finally pick himself up? What did you think, Mick, on that? Yeah, probably holding the ball. I think he slid and probably had an appropriate time to get I reckon you've got to give him that kind of chance, don't you? You reckon, Mick? I mean, he had a... He had a step to get balance and slip, but gee, I think you've got to give the player with the ball all the opportunity. I reckon the only umpires, the way they've umpired at the last two rounds, is the way it should be. I mean, Lee, prior to that, they were just dynamite on the play with the ball. Lee, the difference with that one was that Buckley didn't dive on the ball or elect to go go to the ground, or, sorry, or elect to drag it in. He actually yeah. went to ground with the ball in his arms. Yeah. Yeah. No one going anywhere there. I think another important player now is Tony Francis. He's probably one of the hardball get players in the Collingwood team. Him and Burns would complement each other with the flair of Williams and also Buckley. But I think he's the type of player that should be pushed out of that forward area of the ground and get in around the set plays. There he is now, right where the action is. It seems like he's come up just this last uh, minute or two, so uh, Tony Shaw may have read your mind there, Mick. Almost on centre wing. Francis and Steins. Both heading in the same direction. Smoker unable to take it. Matthew Phoebe at the bottom of the pack. Seacamp got out. Scotty Russell. Eliza to Pirouette. Paul Williams with pace. Williams is away. 55 metres. He long bomb. Oh! That's what he can do, Paul Williams. And I think you... Uh, one thing that Jamie Shannon and they don't move much, those goalposts. And when there's a... <laughs> you, you, should you break them. You oh, should well, know. Well, unless you knock them over, that is. But normally they don't move. But, <laughs> and Jamie Shannon knew then that there was a goalpost coming up straight in his line. But uh, fortunately, the ball for him went off line. He didn't have to continue through. Buckley doesn't fly. Crow waits down. Francis gives it back to him. Short little chip will be OK to Alex McDonald. Great discipline there by Matthew Francis. That's what you've got to do when you're playing within the zone. You've got to get up and punch the ball back because if the ball lands in a Collingwood player's hands, more often than not, they'll have blokes free because they've been in the zone position, and that's what happened in that situation. McDonald was free. The turn is an easy shot on goal. 
looking for his first goal of the day, his fifth for the season. 25 out, he's kicked it. They continue on the comeback trail. That's been a couple of good answering goals, hasn't it, uh, by Collingwood? And Crow kicked the first one and just set up that one to McDonald. And he's out, the uh, physio's out with uh, Crow. But again, that the punch back from the zone, no doubt about it, because the zone players are always forward of the ball, uh, protecting their space. Inevitably, they've got the numbers once the punch back is affected. So good play. Collingwood coming back here at the MCG after Melbourne kicked the first three goals of the quarter. The Pies have kicked the last two. Francis and Steins, the latter is away, but only five metres out of the centre circle. Sandy, you may have noticed that Damien Monkhorst has been uh, off the ground for most of the second quarter and now he's uh, still off the ground for the beginning of the third. Seems as though he's carrying a left ankle. Bounce again in the middle. Francis wins it. Tries to surge through, then loses it out to Buckley. Boy, that was some good ferreting work, wasn't it, by Viney? Sometimes in those centre bounce crushes, you're trying to extricate the ball yourself, obviously, but it's so much better if you can just draw the contest. And Collingwood just looked like they were going to be able to clear it, and Viney and a couple of his Melbourne cohorts just swarmed over the ball, so at least to draw the contest, ball it up again. Still in the middle. A vital break, this one. Buckley does well as he streams through. Gives it away to Williams. It's a high kick to left half forward. It's a good mark. Stephen Phoebe, a strong mark. Going with the flight of the ball. He did well. Gee, that's a dangerous oh, ball. Oh, golly. Dangerous ball. Yeah, going from the back flag into the centre square to a contest. Disastrous. It's a poor kick. Well, that's most unlike Buckley, isn't it? To kick like that. Straight in the arms of Phoebe. I wonder what he'll do, <laughs> do now just has to kick to this member side wing and bloke like Jeff White as he is he's coming up to meet the ball you've got to kick to height in this situation Ingerson and White are both there Burns did well gave it away to Russell who round the body center and kick three Melbourne players there one Collingwood player and that was Schauble Francis caught goes again the big man Pokes it out wide, Williams lost his footing, socket off the ground, down towards Puller, he claims it, give the hand pass away, Chris Siska under pressure, play on is the call, Melbourne has a chance to clear, the kick to pull one, straight to Russell, he's got McDonald streaming past, McDonald's going to go for goal, he steadies, 40 metres out, it's a horrendous kick. Well even coming out of defence, uh, Seacamp there was under heaps of pressure but he just put the ball on his boot. Melbourne player had moved wide. You've still got to think your way through those defensive situations. They're under real pressure now, uh, Melbourne, and that's what pressure does to you. It makes you just panic, and that's uh, the reaction that Seacam had. So, uh, yeah, Rocker off for trying to get a bit more mobility to their forward line. McDonald's getting it, Crow's getting it. Uh, Collingwood are just making their surge again. Steve Phoebe. Time to make a little bit of distance. Doesn't he make the ground? Johnson. Johnson again. He just that long stride made that extra yard when it looked like would he get there or not. He just made it. He's uh, well, they're making position directly over the other side of the ground, <laughs> but it'll be a 60 metre kick, and that's dangerous. It's a good kick on his left side, though. Yeah. It was too. He seems to kick left to right side just as easily, uh, Johnson. I'm still not sure which is his natural kicking action. He <laughs> kicks so uh, that's a poor kick. Oh, Done dear. it again. Now, Seacamp's got the pressure put on him now because Williams will go. But well done by Seacamp. He went, he sat over last, he threw it back in, and he's not the happy camper. Now, fellas, the reason that one was, as we all know, he elected to dive on the ball. Yeah, he did that. And Rocker takes the mark. He's 80 from home. He might let a big bomb go. He does. It's a centering kick. McDonald is there. Can't take the mark. Shanahan gets a hurry kick. It hits a Collingwood player's head and stays in the immediate zone. Crow had it and lost it. Watson to ground. Shovels it out the back door. Well done for Collingwood. Pugsley centering to Schoenow. Good forward football by the Collingwood player. I think it was Watson, was it? When you're over the ball, hit the ball forward. Uh, 
It's amazing how that forward football under pressure, our teammates who gets caught, gets caught slightly behind the ball, and a good uh, centering kick by Pugsley. So Collingwood are really alive and fighting this game out. This is uh, third quarter. Gets to a midway point. And that tap on, isn't that a line ball? Could it have been a throw? Yeah. Or could it be a tap on? It is a very interpretation. John Russo could probably send us through it. This to level the scores as Steins leaves the ground for Schwartz. Scores are level here at the MCG. Joyville gets his second. He moved one in the second quarter. Well, I can tell you what, Sandy and Mick, I've seen a couple of pedestrian games this weekend. Friday night at the MCG, yesterday at Cadinia Park. This is a game of football. All good <laughs> things come to those who well, wait. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's a pulsating game. Both sides are surging at different times. This is really <laughs> the game we love to watch. Scores level, the Magpie Army in full voice. Seventy-eight apiece. Yes, Stein's come off. Schwartz has come back on the ground to go to the full forward post. Jeff White doing the ruck work. It's not a good bounce. Fine for Patterson, who left puts it down towards Rocker. Couldn't take it. They've got the players running though. Tony Francis is one of those. He's like a terrier. He's like a dog with a bone. Out in front of Burns and McDonald. A slap, and they combine. Burns centering again to half forward. Who's going to be first to recover? Scotty Crow at the back of the pack. Viney's got him. The pressure's on Sam Rocker. He's got to defend now. Almost pushes in the back. But locked up and a bounce. Good pressure, probably just a little fortunate. He wasn't free kick, Sam Rocker, but nevertheless, he kept the ball in the area. So uh, the end result is to Collingwood's liking. I think it's exactly as Sandy called it. I think that was a push in the back. And as you say, Lee, they were probably a bit fortunate not uh, to have Sam Rocker penalised. Anthony having a spell. White goes up high, Viney is a very strong player. White was the target oh, again. Stephen Phoebe's uh, oh, turned yes. the ball over three or four key times. Rocker almost. Viney trying desperately to make amends. He gives it out to Hopgood. Off to Seacamp. They're out of trouble here. This is Matthew Phoebe looking up towards half forward. Schwartz has oh, just come on the ground. Good play by Richardson. Good play. But Richardson in front lead. Schwartz was trying to hold Richardson away from the contest. Richardson worked his way to the front and went at the ball. Good play. Fuller marks on centre wing. Plays on now for Collingwood. They go up towards the left half forward. Towards the boundary line. Kept in play, Pugsley gets the hand pass to Crow. It came originally from Buckley, down towards full forward. Rocker a slap to accommodate Francis, tries to chop his way through, and he was taken high. Gee, he might have been a little lucky there, because he took them on. Well, he did take them on, but he went through low. He's a little fallow, and he was crouched, and really it's very hard for the tackle. That's all he this. can do, though, go through low. Well, yes, but I mean, the player, no, the tackling player was yeah. all over the top of him. I mean, I reckon the guy with the ball has to get that kind of protection. A great play out here by Nathan Buckley. Kept his balance in the aerial contest with Woe Woden. But had the presence of mind, he had two Collingwood players inside centre corridor to release the ball back into their path. And that's the reason why T uh, Tony France has now got a shot on goal. So Collingwood, a chance to regain the lead. He doesn't mind these, Francis. No, he's very happy with that one, I can tell you that, Mick. Well called. Tony Francis, his first goal for the season. And again, it's only his first game, but he's back in town. Yes, we've seen it twice, haven't we, on the, uh, the wing closest to the camera here where Collingwood players have kept the ball alive when it could have easily ran out of bounds. Always keep the ball alive in the forward line, keep it dead in your own defence. Pretty basic principles. The Collingwood players have set up two scoring opportunities by uh, following that exact principle. We've got six minutes left in this third quarter. Francis awaits his chance. So too does White. Neither gets an effective tap. Patterson claimed by Phoebe. Viney had it and then lost it. Patterson to half forward. The bouncing ball eludes a couple. Ingerson defends for Melbourne. Goes off to Stephen Phoebe. Thought about wide, now more direct. Collingwood have the numbers here, but it's an awful bounce for Scotty Burns. Oh, he's, got good, he's got assistance. 
That was Russell. Good hand pass to Patterson. Look out. Uze's got you. Not before he gets the hand pass away. Comes wide to McDonald. Back again to Tony Francis. Pugsley's there, but he's ignored. Kicks longer. More directly. That's Rocker. a great kick. He's going to be free kick. He does kick the ball well to the lead, Tony Francis, doesn't he, Mick? He's able to drill the ball low and hard and enable the leading player to move into the ball low. And uh... But let's face it, Lee, the mistake oh. across here by the young fellow we've wrapped all day in Gurgic. The one hand he, again. He went one hand. That's when your whole body's got to go through the line of the ball. He tried to just actually pluck it out of the area of lo the line of the ball. Turnover was created. Patterson set it up on the way through. McDonald released Francis free. And as you said, he's a beautiful kick to a leading player. Low and hard. And the trajectory's there. Makes it very hard for the defensive player to spoil in the appropriate way. You'd back Rocker from here, wouldn't you? This is his distance in a lot of ways. 55 metres. This for 12 point lead. The Army are wrapped. Pies are hot again. Yes, the one thing about Severio Rocco, he's such a long, powerful kick that the 50-metre line or kicking from out there is not a problem. And just the other relaxed. thing about him, Mick, yeah, he does relax and just kicks through the line of the ball. When he gets to those 30 or 40-metre shots, I think he tends to steer it a bit. And But that was a good, powerful kick, wasn't it? But the turnover at half-back, the pressure from Collingwood in this quarter has been very good. And there's that backwards handball that Collingwood have certainly involved in their, you know, their set play and their play forward. What an absorbing duel this is turning out to be. Collingwood again with the ascendancy. White has given away the free kick in his enthusiastic endeavours at the centre. But the hand pass, to say the least, is interesting. Ragoni. Well, that was a beauty by Guy Ragoni. Spotted Travis Johnson. He's got Jeff White. Uses him. White's on right half forward. Melbourne players streaming down the ground. Good mark taken by Smith. Too far out the score is Sean, but David Schwartz is calling for it in the square. Schwartz is going to have to come a long way from behind. It's not a good bounce for him. Viney beautifully trapped. He did it magnificently. A snap. There's a way to the left, and one behind only by McDonald. That's where the pressure is. He just didn't... Uh, he didn't really balance there, McDonald. Good mark from the front uh, position by Smith, but Viney set... Uh, McDonald up and he just could take two or three steps to get himself properly balanced but he kicked off one but that's what happens when the pressure of the game and a tight contest and the opposition on top and Shane Watson done a good job uh, Gurdjick maybe has gone one handed but Watson has certainly been able to close down that position just at the moment Graham Wright one of those players with a reputation for being very accurate Find Scotty Crow. He heads to the outer side. Gurgic, an excellent spoil. Got Pister, but then uh, his kick was smothered. Seacan may try and go back to him again. Colin with a charge now. The turnover is there. Krasiska hangs on to it for a while. Proppy hand pass. Tony Francis through the middle. Up to Crow again. Collingwood inside 50. Ingerson defends. Comes wide. Melbourne would love to close this gap before three-quarter time. They've got three and a quarter minutes to do it. Up towards right half forward. Schwartz is beaten for an edge too far underneath by Richardson. Back he goes towards Burns. Kicks under pressure and straight to Viney. Gets around McDonald. Poor kick. Oh, poor Again, kick. as you can hear the boys, a poor kick. It's been a poor game by David Schwartz. He has been pretty much a non-contributor today. Just can't get into the game at all, not marking the ball. And obviously then slow at ground level. He's only had one mark for the day, Lee, in four possessions. Yeah. Krasisko. Ingerson a flyer from behind. Unable to take it. Pugsley was in the thick of things, but without the ball. Here's Wo Woden. Gets around Buckley. Kicks to the middle again. Now, Collingwood have got the numbers here. Alex McDonald. Got a call out wide from Richardson. Another one even wider to Francis. Uh oh In unison, they cry as one ball. Steins, Viney, still on centre wing. It's tough. Smith in front with a one hand. Pro goes in to give assistance. Watson in trouble. Oh, it clean bowls the lock. Hopgood is on the end of it. Hopgood kicks long into goal, coming back at the last minute, but not though. No, they're a little flush at the moment, Melbourne, aren't they? They just, because yeah. the game's turned against them this last 15 minutes, you can see that every time a Melbourne player gets the ball, they're just a little bit hurried, a little bit tense, 
and uh, look, those cu last couple of opportunities have, uh, have gone begging. Yeah, just like the poise and setting up on the way through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a, a balanced run at goal, but still just hurried himself at the last minute, did Hopgood. Richardson. Fine grab. Has to be a good kick. From Russell. Oh, bad drop mark. Buckley. Around the body, down towards left half forward. Ingerson lost it. Scheuble, he wanted Pugsley, just couldn't quite find him. Woe Woden defends, he goes into halfback. A chance now for Melbourne to build here from Guy Ragoni. Is a penetrating kick. White's his target. Couldn't take it. Smoker does the scouting. Wobbles it down to the forward line. Michael goes towards the boundary line. Passes Travis Johnson and is more than happy to see it go over. Been very good, the Collingwood defence, this last 15 minutes. Mick, uh, their rebounds enabled their forwards to have these uh, scoring opportunities and they're really making life very difficult for the Melbourne forwards. Terrific tackle by Scott Burns on Smoker too. Yeah. Speaking of the man, he kicks it high, back towards the middle. Francis and Stein says... Uh, Francis pushed out. He's been good, Francis. Yeah. A bit more mobile, isn't he? Gives a little bit more mobility around the ruck contest. Wants Schauble. Pugsley's at the back. Mightn't get a chance, or if, it, if he does, it'll be late. Because the lock Held the ball in. That was the uh, best yeah. part of it from Schauble's point of view. Uh, it's not that France is getting a lot of the ball, it's just that his positioning is making White and yep. Steins, his yep. direct opponents, get into foreign parts of the ground. They're not being used on the way through. Good discipline approach by Francis. Here he goes again, Francis and Steins, although the bounce certainly doesn't favour them. Pro, short kick, but straight to Steins. Big Jim celebrating 250 games. Finds Seacamp almost in the middle. Uze, been quiet in this term. Smith down on the lead. Been good Smith, hasn't he? Yeah. He's, he's presented himself uh, much better than any of the other Melbourne forward targets in this game. He's a leading forward, isn't he, Lee? Yeah. He, he just got that bit of speed to get away then, did from Michael, didn't he? Well, he's kicked two so far. This is uh, a big shot, though, because it's virtually the last kick at goal in this quarter. It's very important. Collingwood have kicked the last five consecutive goals in the game. 45 metres out. Melbourne needs it, and Smith has got it. That is a big goal for Sean Smith. He's booted three in this quarter now. Yes. Yeah, very, very good uh, goal by Smith again. Uze coming forward. He just was able to kick the ball off the outside of the left boot just to put the ball out in the line of uh, the leading Smith. Gave Smith probably a 70-30 chance to mark it and, uh, and Smith made the most of that uh, percentage. We've seen the value of getting the ball back into the centre corridor. So three goals to Smith. Collingwood leads by four points. In a rip-roaring game here at the MCG, the Ds go forward again, thanks to Leoncelli, down towards right half forward. Scotty Russell heads towards the boundary line, Brent Gergich is edged out of it. One thing about Watson, he seemed to play more a body-on-body -body game against Gergich. It's the first time we've seen him in that body situation against the defender in this quarter, and Watson's done a fairly good job. The last 10 seconds of the game, Leon Chelly, but straight to Francis, who gives it to Buckley off to Williams. He's on half back. And it'll be safe now for Collingwood. No addition to the score. And it's all set up for a cliffhanger in this final quarter. An absorbing third quarter when Melbourne stormed out of the blocks, Lee. I mean, three and goals in three minutes, and we thought, hello, something's going to explode here. It did look like they'd broken the game open just a little, didn't they? But, yeah, Collingwood showed the fight. It's been really just a, a fluctuating game. Collingwood started the game and jumped off early, and then Melbourne came back in the second quarter, and then the start of the third. And Collingwood had the essential. I thought Melbourne stabilised it just the last five minutes. They got the one goal, but more importantly, just stabilised the general play. So uh, the margin of uh, four points, you'd want to be in front rather than behind. But in this general look of the game, they go in, I think, this, to this fourth quarter very evenly poised.
Yes, Neil Danaher heads out to his charges. Survival of the fittest. Uh, both sides of their injury worries. Of course, Melbourne without Jeffrey Farmer. Greg Hutchison, the assistant coach to Neil Danaher. And what a scoreline. The Pies by four points as we take a break. So we're set to go for a big final quarter here at the MCG. Collingwood lead by four points. Francis gets first touch of the ball, both with hand and foot, then runs into Ingerson, so Francis does it again. Scheuble down towards Tony Francis. The Pies are looking for a big start. Melbourne got one in the third quarter. Krasiska to Rocker. Bye, baby. He can't. Ragoni gives it away to Shanahan. Jamie Shanahan heads to the outer side. Good body Mark. play then by Burns. Just yep. marked it when there was a contest. I think Johnson wrote about where Burns was rather than just running at the ball in the rear. Alex McDonald on the outer wing. Kicks up towards left half forward. Steins drops back and marks uncontested. They like to spread the ball wide, don't they, Melbourne? Go in one yeah. side, out the other. But then they've got to have someone to kick to. It's Ragoni. Well, they've gone across the ground. Right across to Hopgood. Collingwood's defensive pressure has been good because they've just enabled... Oh, it is a dangerous ball. Who was he kicking it to? Uh, he, was, he was kicking it, I think, to Leon Challey's lead, but the ball went nowhere near him. And uh, really, it was a poor kick. But they, yeah. they're really not giving them a target forward, Melbourne. They're marking players forward of the ball. Krasiska to full forward. Francis hurriedly out of the air. Will mark it himself and be called to play on. Ingerson had it and lost it. It's socket off the ground. Scotty Crow. Hand passes wide towards Williams. He gets a fickle bounce. Steins is steady and cool to Paul Hopgood. And Hopgood's away. Up towards centre wing. Burns and Travis Johnston. Johnston does well. Flicks towards the line. Burns keeps it in. Well done, Scotty Burns. Off to Scotty Russell. Now Alex McDonald. Collingwood goes surging forward again. Pugsley couldn't take the mark. And a throw in in the left forward pocket. Very strong uh, body play. Good balance, uh, Scott Burns. And opposed to the young youngster Travis Johnson at least Johnson then was able to make sure he pushed his body back in hard and uh, drew the contest that one before of course Burns marked it Steins won it and look at them lie on that ball interesting it's also see the use of uh, Matthew Francis now directly opposed to Jimmy Steins in the ruck Steins is trying to get back and plug the hole for Rocker not to lead into and also Matty Francis is making a second centre forward to complement Schwarbel Steins beaten. He was up against a couple. Patterson. Krasiska. Round the body. Well, a couple seemed to be called out there and left it. Whoa, whoa. Well, we had a player fall to the ball, we Woden. But again, that pressure that Collingwood, the tackling pressure made by Collingwood has been very good. And Wo Woden, then when he looked up, if he had a, just a split second to look up, he would have seen Phoebe was clear. But he just, the pressure made him just go for the line. Anthony Collingwood. Rocker. Collingwood have made a change. Sandy yeah. is small for a tall. Full has come off the ground. Anthony, Ro Anthony Rock has replaced him. Uze tumbles a punt that'll bounce high. Back towards the middle. McDonald tries to flick it on. Shane Watson showed courage. Williams slides on it. Could almost be ping. Gergic still going. Viney from Gergic. Sweeps it over the top to accommodate Matthew Phoebe. It's an awful bounce. Tony Francis didn't have the ball when he was held. Play on is the call. The See, they're looking tired now, the out. players, aren't they? Oh, my word they are. And Gergic takes it over. He's, he's, <laughs> we spoke about him a lot today, the young fella, Gergic. And, and I just then, he's just now, this last 10 minutes, playing almost uh, lacklustre, almost just as if he's not really going to go at the ball. He's just thinking about what he's doing. Uh, very strange reaction, because he's certainly in form. Steins and the kick is OK. And that was Scotty Russell going forward of the ball. Johnston was the target. Now he's got to beat three of them. Poor to finish. That was a poor No finish. chance. Watson defends. Goes back towards the centre. That was just a kick and hope by McDonald across the forward 50. Good mark by Pugsley, though. This is Francis. Collingwood attacking again. The lights on at the MCG. A big fly, but no mark. Comes to Seacam at the front of the pack. Tumbles it back towards Buckley and Co. Woden was there too. He couldn't take it. Francis puts the handball out towards 
Francisco who's ridden into the ground. It's tackling, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's just tackling. a matter of who can who can actually stand up under this pressure and think their way through it because both sides for tackling pressure has been extremely good. Match is tight. The adrenaline's flowing. It's a matter of really being able to think clearly when everything around you is just going 100 miles an hour. On centre wing. Francis wins it to Williams. And there's that backward handball again. Yep, it's okay too to Russell. Again, he blasts forward. Melbourne have the numbers. Fine chest mark by Hopgood. He's away up towards Viney and Gergic. Viney first to recover. A chance for Melbourne now. The kick is great to Sean Smith. That is a great finish by Viney. He assessed his options. He, he went for the contest. He, he looked, looked inside. He looked back for that backward handball, but he assumed... Every, every Melbourne player was covered, but he just had the presence of mind to look over the open side of the field, and Sean Smith, at, once again, on a lead. Great kick, and now he's got a chance to kick his fourth. It's a big call by Neil Danaher to, uh, to take Viney out of the centre square and put him in half forward, but he's got to get a few of those balls. 40 metres out, this to regain the lead. The Melbourne Red and Blue Army goes up. They're back. Sean Smith booted four, all in the second half. Spent a lot of time on the bench. A terrific play by Paul Hopgood. He was on Buckley early. He met the ball across half back. That loose ball in the air. It was really only a kick and hope to centre half forward. And Viney was the one who got it ground level. And gee, it was great awareness, wasn't it, Mick, to kick the ball across the body into the path of the looting Smith. Sean Smith is playing that full forward post exceptionally well. He's playing right on the goal line, giving the space of him in front of him, and he's leading hard at the ball carriers for Melbourne. Still plenty of time in this quarter for either side to snatch victory. Leoncelli to half forward. Gergic up, but he couldn't take it. Quick to recover to apply the tackle. Free kick. And he's given it away. Hi, Sandy. Is that a hello? Hi, or John. No, I knew you'd come in with that line. Definitely a high tackle, not a high hello. I thought it could have been a bit of both, mate. To send a wing, Buckley. Can Collingwood answer? Shanahan gets out in front, pops it over the top to Stein. Back to Jamie again. His not, hand pass was interesting. <laughs> he's not comfortable with the ball in his hands, Jamie <laughs> Shanahan. A much better spoiling defender, uh, cutting out an opposition player when he gets the ball in his hands. Uh, I think even his own teammates might just be get a bit nervous. But in a, situ a situation like that, I think it's better to think yardage with your feet rather yeah, than yardage yeah. with your hand. Well, I think what he did then was just make sure the thing went out of bounds, didn't he? Here's Hopgood on halfback. Oh, that's good play. Gives it away to Uze. Comes back towards the centre. Now Viney's got players streaming past. One is Stephen Oh, Phoebe. he won't get there. Oh. You could see it happening, couldn't you? Yeah, but he might get another chance. He's socking it out of the air, only to see it taken by Burns. That is a great kick. Towards Krasiska. Saw him at the corner of his eye. That's He's on the center wing. The hard running when you've just ran forward, now you've got to run back. Rock is the target. Bounces off his chest. Uze gets a hurry kick back towards Krasiska and Viney. They are exhausted, these players. Here's Graham Wright. Long in towards half forward once again. Waiting down in front. Conley would have the numbers. Williams sweeps it wide. It's taken by Buckley. Into the pocket he goes. And over the line. I've spoken about Stephen Phoebe. He's got a lot of the ball. He's had 25 possessions. But just with his short use, he hasn't picked the right yes, option. He's no. created turnovers. When you go short into the centre corridor, you must find a vacant player who's free. Gotten back onto the ground. Anthony Rocker is back off. Scotty Crow, 55 metres oh, here out. Here's a chance at the back. Shanahan will give away a behind. There's Big Sam. Thought all his Christmas were going to come at once. What he's doing, Stephen Phoebe, he's actually kicking the ball above the head of that guy he's going to. And one, it's a dangerous position, but mainly he's actually not allowing, he's just setting up that player underneath the ball. And the Collingwood players have been able to get there and really just spoil very easily from. Uh, Overhead. A lot of the times, Lee, it's that chip over the mark. Yeah. A player yeah. in between the bloke you're trying to find. There's someone in between. You're just chipping the ball over. Low percentage. Who's A to C camp? They've, been, they've always looked a little bit shaky coming out of defence on these kick-ins, Melbourne. Always just a little bit hoping. 
towards centre wing. Stephen Phoebe tries to spoil. Travis Johnson is clear. Johnston across the middle to Viney. Draw the space forward. Todd Viney goes for home. It's White and Richardson. White pulled off the ball down front, couldn't take it. Ricochets away from McDonald. Gergich is there, tries to get it out, but straight to Scotty Burns. Collingwood grimly defending. Burns comes wide, too wide. Big effort for Siska. And this is just a game of who can just stand up, isn't it? I mean, Rock had a chance to mark down the other end. It went through from behind. And White just looked like he might uh, be able to mark it. But terrific. Uh, he was uh, cut up by Lockett last week, Mark Richardson. But today, his uh, job as a tall defender has been very good. Well, we've got plenty of time, Lee. 12 minutes remaining in this match. Buckley gets it out to Russell. He tumbles up under half forward. Seacamp, well done. He charts his arm and he tumbles it back to half forward. Oh. Gergich takes a great mark. Well, he come and met the ball. It was a bouncing ball through the centre square there, Seacamp. I reckon he would have been hoping because it could have bounced over his head. But, no risk. Well, as they say, fortune favoured the brave. He came and met the ball, which is, I guess, the percentages are keep coming and meet it. But when it's bouncing like that in that hard centre square, well, it could buy it. It could bounce high or it could bounce flat and low, and it was flat and low. Here's a big kick from 52 metres, a flat helicopter putt. Oh, he's kicked it, this youngster. Brent Gergic. Yeah, terrific play by C. Campy. He really attacked the ball, as Lee said. And one thing about Gergic, he does find front position. Yeah. It's very important for a forward player. Even though late in the game, you'll find that the ball will drop if the, the execution isn't good. The percentages well, say we'll you are playing in front. As we see here, Gergic in front of his opponent, Watson. He has got sure hands, this young kid. A very promising player. Gergic. That's his name, Lee. <laughs> so Melbourne sneak a couple of kicks clear. And in the context of this game, a couple of kicks are a lot. Steins does well. Leon Shelley to half four. There he is again. Gergic couldn't quite take the mark cleanly enough. Shane Watson, the good doctor, sprints away, tumbles at the half forward. Oh, an excellent mark taken by Inderson. Great courage. Backing into the pack. Plays on now to Hopgood. He looks better suited back there in defence, Hopgood. Chips away to the outer side and Phoebe. Yeah, Buckley was probably just a little bit good overhead, wasn't he? And Buckley was making himself a marking target. And uh, yeah, Hopgood better on a ground level play, whether it be small defence or in that midfield tagging role he's been playing recently. Shane Mowoden wants Gergic. He goes close to the boundary line, but the youngsters do it well. Here's another one. Two very promising young players from Melbourne. Oh, aren't they? Big futures for the club. Travis Johnston. Well, he goes for distance, gets underneath it. Now we want the Rovers at the back. Here we go, the skipper! Missed it. Ooh. The crowd were up for that one, weren't they? <laughs> well, it's been interesting. As I said, I thought it was a really big call to take Todd Viney out of the centre square, but he is giving them some ground-level um, work in the forward line, and I think that's been their problem for a lot of the game, Melbourne. They really haven't been able to get the ball at ground, and particularly when Farmer went off, there was no, they had no speed. And just uh, his crumbing ability or Viney's ability to work in the bottom of the pack is actually giving Melbourne's forward structure uh, a bit of an extra dimension in this last quarter. Ten minutes left in the match. Buckley to Burns. He's got Krasiska out very wide. We can go more direct. Richardson will come in from the side to affect the spoil. Smoker. Wrong option. Yes, he tried to just finesse it along the boundary line there. It was a little bit lucky he didn't go out of bounds on the full. Yeah. That would have been disastrous, but as it is, uh, and that's the ball is not, not going to do them a lot of harm. That's what happens when you kick short to a 50-50 contest. Steins trying to do it from behind. Williams will run out of room. Oh. Keeps it in play, whether it was the right option or not. McDonald, Mal Michael tries to slap it away. Francis picks it up and left puts it back towards centre wing. They might be tired, but by gee, there's still some desperation in this game. Smoker asks the question politely, did it come off the leg of Russell? But no. There'll be a throw-in on centre-wing. Moncourt's sideline. 
So to Rocca. Russell couldn't take it. Here's a chance for Steins. Pops it out in front of Seacamp. 60 metres out. Seacamp shoots long in towards full forward. Sean Smith smothered at the back. Johnston could be a match winner. Ian Travis. Steins, he's been a very good player in this first uh, 15 minutes of play in the last quarter. He's got back to block the hole for Rocker, but also his aerial work in the, in the boundary throwings and stop play situations when the umpire has the ball has been exceptional. That time he released the ball by hand to Seacamp, who overlapped from the half-back line. He probably had Jeff White, who was the leading option, but he decided to go long. The crumbing option was there. Young Johnson, he's been an outstanding player today. That's his fourth goal. Tony Shaw and Collingwood have some work to do. Yeah, Jimmy Steins, that boundless stamina. I think he keeps going in fourth quarters a little bit more than other players who are tiring around him. Well, it is game 250. <laughs> he wants to remember it. Melbourne want to do it for him. He played 244 straight and he gets it out of the middle again. Gergic leaps over the pack. Ooh. Almost gave away a free kick. Wright will take the hand pass and defend from half back. They've got to get their skates on now. Collingwood, they've got eight and three-quarter minutes remaining. Steins. Well done, Jimmy. Wide to Smoker. The advantage is paid because Steins was taken high. Smoker goes short. Viney and Wright squabble with one another. Burns plays on. In towards the centre. Tony Francis had to beat a couple. One was Seacamp. Gets it across to Russell. Miss His Taylor. hand passes wide. Not good. Lianchelli shrugs the tackle from half back. Swings it back in towards the middle. And there he is again. Gergic gives it away beautifully to Phoebe. 60 metres out. Pops it up in the air. They need a flyer. Like that. That's what they need. He was the marking forward that had to stand up, knowing that David Schwartz hadn't touched it all day. But Sean Smith. His uh, second half has been exceptional. We know Mel Michael will more often than not play the front position. And when you're playing on a player like this who does love a little bit of a run at the mark, he certainly can get on the shoulder of his opponent. Got great balance in the air, hasn't he? And then when Phoebe, actually I don't think Phoebe certainly didn't aim at him. He ran too close to the Collingwood player coming at him. Had to chip the ball in the air. But you could see Michael sitting under it and you could see Smith with three or four steps to jump. And... Uh, this was always inevitable he would jump and mark. This is for number five for Sean Smith. Say goodnight to the folks, Gracie. The D's are home. Well, there's been a couple of times during the game where it's looked like Melbourne were home. Uh, certainly in the third quarter we thought that and Colin would have come back. But with seven or eight minutes to go, it's going to be an enormous performance by... Uh, Collingwood and Mark Richardson has gone into the ruck just to try and change things round and I think that's quite a good move. He's a player who's played well. He might be able to be fresh in there. Twenty points now for Collingwood to make up. Twenty-one to regain the lead. Steins again. I think he suddenly realised this is his 250th and he's going to celebrate with a big finish. Viney, Phoebe, oh, they're running now. McDonald, he wants to get in the action. Smith again. This time away to the left. He's certainly running harder on Melbourne. And Viney, doesn't he run straight at the ball? And that's what you've got to do when there's a loose ball. He just picks the target, runs in with the line of the ball, and he just makes it his own. And six key possessions across half forward for Viney. It certainly... Uh worth well putting him in there just to give a little bit ground level competitiveness in this last quarter. Crowd today boys of 57,425 that's pretty good Burns on the last line of defence comes away. Three against one here. Seacamp and the numbers will always win out. Smoker on left half forward Long in towards uh, Johnston, Smith and Co. A few jumps there. Oh, tell you what, it's like playing at the Olympic Games high jump down there at the moment. Shane Watson chips over the top. Has uh, Richardson or Patterson. The former lost it. Now he gets it out to the latter. A high kick. Should be OK for Jim Steins. He's had a sensational last quarter, Sandy. Yep. Shoved in the back as he took the mark. His tenth possession. He's been a high... Possession getter as this game's war on 10th position in the last quarter, that is. Why Woden to Stephen Phoebe come across the ground to Marcus Seacamp. 
Seacamp's got a little bit of time to find Smoker on centre wing. Again, he short passes, and that's OK. He finds Adam Uze. So the Melbourne march continues, or so it seems. Smith forced to defend, coming from behind, Michael. 21-point margin. Six minutes remaining. You can hear the Melbourne chant in the background. Steins hurriedly gets boot to ball. Shaw will claim. Ball stays in the area for the moment anyway. Burns takes the hand pass from McDonald, kicks wide to the outer side. Shane Watson leads in the race, but they'll be set to pounce on him. A backhand slap might not necessarily work. They eventually pushed forward again to accommodate Watson. He kicks it high and long. Uze doesn't fly. He thought about it, but Rocker is able to beat his opposition and take the mark. Should, on and off the bench. That's where he should go back and have a shot at goal. Try to keep Collingwood in touch. It's interesting also, Nathan Buckley's gone to the true centre full position, but I just question whether he'd be better suited now because they need ball winners around where the fall of the ball is, whether he should be put back into the centre part of the ground. Kicking from 54 metres. Good looking kick. So Anthony Rocker gets his second. He booted one in the second term, and the Pies close the gap. Have they got time? Well, his uh, second goal, but also only his second mark. He really hasn't uh, been an influence today in his time on the ground. Ingerson has been pretty good back there, but that ability to kick the ball long from outside 50, that's both the Rocker brothers possess that great ability to score from a long way out. Well, there is time. Five minutes. Well, the proof is in the pudding too, Lee. They have to be marking players and they have to mark the ball more yeah. often than not to yeah. become valuable contributors. Five minutes left. 15 points the margin. Plenty of time. Russell couldn't take it out of the middle. But Patterson can for Collingwood. Down towards Anthony Rocker again. He couldn't take it. Scotty Crow, 40 metres out. Chips in towards goal. Collingwood are alive. Second goal to Scotty Crow. <laughs> Well, this just, game is just producing yeah, everything. It is, again, halfway through the third quarter. As we said, it looked like uh, Melbourne were home and then Collingwood came again. And, uh, well, they've kicked the last two, so it's certainly now a nine-point margin with uh, that five minutes to play. So the game is undoubtedly still alive. These couple of centre-bounce clearances are just going to be so important just to see who can get it into their forward half. Well, Gracie was going to say goodnight to the folks. You might have done it prematurely. <laughs> Here we go. And the crowd certainly getting involved. Ah, oh, well, this is what it's all about, isn't it? Richardson in the ruck, but he's beaten. Krasiska unable to take it cleanly. Melbourne need an answering goal. Great Good smother. smother. Here's an opportunity now for the Pies to go forward again. It's Richardson. Long kick. The ruck is on a lead. That but is it's a great Anthony kick. in front of him. Well, that was just a bit of luck, but that doesn't matter. The uh, rocker just happened to be underneath the floating kick. He certainly saw both rockers. I've got a feeling that Richardson was more aiming at Sav, who yeah. was leading longer, but the ball dropped short. Rocker happened to be in the right position, but that smother, the kick, the smother of the kick from Matthew Phoebe, that really all of a sudden the ball, instead of being 50 metres Melbourne's way, was 20 metres back into Mark Richardson's hand. So that defensive pressure, I think, has been one of the highlights of this game. And that was Krasiska who done that great smother lead. Rocker from 50. Here comes Collingwood again. He goes. What a game. Three-point game. Well, you said it, Sandy. And that's just <laughs> been a fantastic, fluctuating event uh, from start to finish. And just, the uh, again, the ability to not make mistakes. We just saw the smother there. Then Richardson. Rocker just happened to be floating and under the ball. And he marked it with those last two goals. A very, very valuable kick. He had their score, and the goal umpire didn't move either time. <laughs> and you reckon the crowd is into this game? Oh, golly. And what an important centre bounce this one is. Four minutes left. Steins wins it. Melbourne are dog tied. They both are, but it's Collingwood at the moment that have got the legs. Graham Wright heads to the outer side. Seacam. 
chanced his arm, was unable to take it. Crow picks himself up. The hand pass is eventually beautifully controlled by Buckley. Penetrating kick into the forward line. Rock up! Play on! And they do. The Melbourne defence under heaps of pressure oh, now. That has to be 50. That's, that's got to be 50. He just got there a bit late, Gavin, because this yeah. never just was over-aggressive in a wrong situation. And great composure there by Hopgood. Yeah, he thought yeah, his way out, then didn't he? Yeah, he thought cool. his way through the situation. The Demons preparing to make a change. It looks as though Bishop is going to come back on. Looks like they're going to say, well, Jeff White should be fresh. Give him a chance in the yeah, back. Push Jimmy, him up forward. Jimmy Steins comes off and he looks absolutely exhausted. Good body yeah, play, Again, Burns. now Burns, about three or four times he's out position. Johnson in the marking contest. Burns in the back pocket. Precious seconds tick away. Three minutes left. Bishop is just Good on. Mark. He's out marked by Richardson. The play and he's all the play on. Players down here, though. He's away now. Down towards half four. That's a good kick. Rucker, Anthony. And what we didn't see was Inderson slip. It was, uh, well, the umpire, I don't know whether he paid the mark. I don't think he called play on. I think it was never a mark. But Inderson slip. And Rocker ran into the ball. Well, he's kicked two. His confidence should be up. His <laughs> rhythm's up. <laughs> Won't be many more pressure kicks in this than any one player out there today's had. This for Collingwood to hit the front. Now, just watch him at the back of the goals. If this is anywhere near straight. Look at the oh. post. Oh. <laughs> didn't yeah. kick that with the same motion, did he? He didn't quite get through the kick. Didn't quite drive it, but, uh, well... Do you want a more dramatic finish? I don't think <laughs> we can find this. <laughs> Interesting to see what Melbourne do here. Do they go long to height, or do they just try to use the ball oh. for possession? <laughs> Settle, settle down, Lee. Oh, I thought they'd missed in between. Now, that was a good composure. Out, short, wide. The, the get-out kick wide to the back flank. This is Uze. Now it's a question of who to go to. They need to push their players across. He's been told to go. Johnston may be one of the flyers at the back, but he slipped. Play on was the call, and it's pushed towards the line. As precious seconds tick down. But Melbourne making another change. Schwartz is uh, back out onto the ground. Well, that's an interesting call. Uh, Ingerson off. I knew they put Bishop to half back on uh, on Rocker. Here's Krasiska. Down to half forward. Good mark by Scotty Crow. The Collingwood forwards have started to play in front and the ball's dropped short. They've been rewarded. The moment of truth now for Collingwood. Rocker couldn't take it. Godden shrugs one tackle. He loves these. Rocker bends it back but not enough. And even the goal up has a wry smile. Well, you reckon the pressure's on Melbourne now. They've got this lead on the scoreboard, but the Collingwood team are just... The momentum seems irresistible with a couple of minutes to play. One and a half minutes, to be precise, and remaining. Have a, and have a look at Tony Shaw. On the edge of his seat, and rightfully so. Crowd is an absolute buzz. Here's Todd Viney, the skipper. They've got no-one to kick it to. Wright has to get across. Trying to take charge. Oh! Whoa. Sure. <laughs> Sorry to be please. wooing and ooing, Sandy, but this is just... Uh... <laughs> well, no, I've never seen you this excited. <laughs> I think it's great. Collingwood players must man up here. Must man up. Rigoni still in the back pocket. Kicks it long and high. We're down to a minute left. Big pack of players. Jeff White does the roving at the front. Anthony Rocker farms it out. Just pushes it towards goal. Godden's hand pass a little loose. Anthony Rocker goes again, but oh, he can't take great it. Great strength. That's strength. That is dash. That is marvellous play. Liam Chelly, well done. Up towards left half forward. Schwartz has been quiet. It's belted away from him, but it has saved some time. Well done, Liam Chelly. Yeah, terrific play by Liam Chelly. He really attacked the ground level ball, picked it up in a real aggressive manner. He knew that his intentions were, and he just released the ball out of the danger zone for the time being for Melbourne. Tony Shaw's just tapping the desk, cool and calm. <laughs> oh, what a porky pie that is. Schwartz, high, inside 50. Smith, the flyer. Enough to get frequent flyer points, but not high enough to hold the ball. It's man-on-man -man situation all over the ground from Melbourne's point. Collingwood have tried to get, a, got to get free hands on this boundary throw-in and try to set it up from this part of the ground. They've got half a minute to do it. Melbourne lead by a point. Trying to do it for Jim Steins. 
Here's Johnston. His kick is smothered. Burns gets a short kick. Now dog tired. Phoebe ridden into the ground. Picks himself up. Gets it off to Liam Chelly. Liam Chelly, well done. He's clear. He shoots. It's a behind. Oh. Well, we know that there's about 14 seconds to go, but the players, all they know is on the time clock. It's almost 30 minutes. And they really have to have one. They've got one surge down the middle of the ground. I think uh, no, Tizzing Buckley's played on. Listen to this as we come to a conclusion. Richardson's going to have to fly. Can't take the mark. Vine is steady. Johnston's got it. The youngster can seal it forever. He shoots towards goal. It doesn't matter. It's all over. Melbourne are victorious. What a game, Sandy. Oh. Sensational. And that's what footy's all about. There's no doubt about that. You won't get a better game than that.